fact, that's exactly right. Yeah, if I ain't got a big dick, I don't need to be in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> See how this goes. Three, two, one. Boom, and welcome to the Big Honker Podcast live YouTube version. This podcast is sponsored by Bang Tail Whiskey. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. That is me. That and, is me. And with us, the guest today, the stud from Archer City, Texas, way of Iowa Park. <laughs> Mr. Way of Iowa Park. That's how the introduction I get. So, wait, what, what, where else would you want me to say you're from? Uh, where parts, else you parts unknown. From? Parts unknown. Yeah, parts unknown. I don't. Yeah, I guess you you could say for anywhere on that hell because hell I've lived North Texas. North Texas. How about North Texas. how about for recognize uh, if I introduce you this as Kelly Jean's trophy husband Clay Reed? Would that work? Yeah, there you go. You're a trophy yeah, husband. Yeah, I am a trophy husband for she, certain. She's probably like what. Fucking tournament she hell did I win? Being married to the motherfucking coyote man. <laughs> <laughs> now you got all... after today though. Yeah, after she got the pregnancy news. You go ahead and tell everybody about that because they probably don't all know. Ah, uh, well, you're I... proud papa number seven now, right? Yeah, six. It was six. number six. Okay, yeah. well, th this we know of. Yeah. Th oh, don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I don't get on ancestry.com. <laughs> Have you seen that Netflix deal with that guy? Uh, he was a, a fertility doctor, and he's a, he was uh, uh, knocking it, basically knocking Our it all father. That, like a yeah, I guess that's what it is, like two thousand or something kids. Oh, he was using his sperm on yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, and that's how they found out. You know, they got on ancestry dot com and blink, uh, blink, uh, blink, uh, and they were all within like an eighty mile radius. So hell, all them people walking down the streets trying to figure out. Is that my cousin? Is that my brother? Is that my sister? <laughs> why that would be? Could you imagine? Why would you want to do that? I don't know. Well, I, I didn't watch the whole damn thing. I ain't gonna bullshit you. But uh, <laughs> they said something about. I, I remember on the trailer he was trying to create the perfect race. I guess he had a little Nazi in him or something. He was going to create the perfect race. Yeah, yeah. And he, I guess that would be the ultimate narcissist. That son of a gun. Thought his shit was that good. Of course, I'm pretty proud of my shit too. So, I don't know. <laughs> you proud enough to have one two thousand kids? Uh, no, no, hell no. I would hope I'd leave the world a better place. So today, you got on your wife's Facebook. Yeah, you yeah, hacked she, into she, it. Yeah, she she screwed up because she goes to work. Of course, I leave the house early in the morning. So, and then I come back in to get my other pickup, and she I found her phone out there on the porch. That's a big fucking mistake around me. And, uh, and of course, I know her code to get in her deal, and I got in there, and I and I wrote something about I said, well, I just want everybody to know that uh, me, uh, me and Clay are expecting our sixth kid. Uh, yeah, it was unexpected, but we're going to have to learn to roll with it and all this. And uh, then I put something, you know, he said, well, you know, the doctor told me, he said, yeah, I think it's in the air. And said I asked him in the air. He said, "Yeah, your feet are in the air too much." And uh, but we've already got a. It's going to be a boy. We got a boy name picked out. It's going name's going to be Jock Me Off and uh, Jock Me Off Reed and a bunch of other BS down there. But so hell, Kelly's at work. She's oblivious to anything that's going on. And then a little later, she calls me from her work phone. Have you got my fucking phone? I said, yeah. <laughs> she said, well, I get getting people calling up here congratulating me on expecting our sixth baby. Or, well, be her fourth with her, but yeah. So anyway, I thought it was funny. I'll probably, and, and of course, I, I tagged all my daughters, my daughter-in-laws in the in the post, and I said, anybody that wants to donate money for diapers and uh, formula, make check payable payable to clay reed and could, could you imagine starting over right now 
Honestly. Yeah, I, I actually did today when when Kelly finally chewed my ass out, and uh, I got to thinking about that. I would lose my fucking mind because I got friends of mine that are having them. I don't. I just got a mighty I, I drive me nuts. No, I love my kiddos to death, but uh, thirty years. Well, you know, we just graduated my last kid the other night. And uh, that's 27 years I've had it, one of my kids in the Archer City School District. And I loved it. But I'm I, everybody said, well, you're going to get that em empty nest syndrome. I said, no, it ain't happening. <coughs> uh, we had the empty nest. We got Ollie. And Ollie's not bad. Yeah. But my grandkids, we just got back from Puerto Rico on a family vacation. Right. All the grandkids were there. Everybody was except for pain. He was in Seattle. He couldn't go to that one. But anyways, we went the whole family. I love my grandkids to death. But there is no way that I could do twenty four seven seven days a week. There's a, just there's no way at all. I, I just it, it would. I'm too old for that. They it's, are it's, exhausted. Yes, and it's I an mean, energy deal. Like Andy, he don't even notice. I'd be like, God, you got to be wore out. No, yeah, because you're young. Yeah, and and, and, and see the guys and Papa, we're we're like the jungle gym. You yes, know, and they want they you know they see Dad all the goddamn time. Well, Papa, we want to wrestle. We want to jump on you and all that and. Yeah, I remember the last time, I guess it was last summer, last August before Haley, we had all seven of my grandkids there at the house. And I ain't shitting it. Kelly found me in my closet. I had hid in the closet and was taking a nap in that son bitch shit. Get your goddamn ass out there. Them you fucking kids out. God, you're fucking tired. I'm tired. You <laughs> worry me now. Yeah, I mean, them suckers, they wear your ass out. Well, And abusive. Yeah. Though I'm the pool monster. If, if yeah. there's a pool there, they want me in the pool with them. And they left. And Dylan even asked me the other day. She goes, you get in here so you can be our jungle gym. I'm 54 <laughs> years old. Yeah. And, and, and you're getting heavy. You know, yeah. Richard, Jameson, what's he weigh, 30 pounds? Mm -hmm. Jameson's 30 pounds. I don't mind him jumping off my shoulders. Yeah. She's pushing 70. Well, 70 pounds jumping off. That don't sound much to a young guy. But 70 pounds picking up and throwing and stuff. Oh, geez. Oh, my God. Yeah, you don't have to work out. You ain't got to go to the gym with them goddamn grandkids. Boy. That's why I like them in small spurts. And uh, I really don't want them all seven at the same time. That's why when y when I seen y'all y'all went on that trip, I was like, God almighty, made me tired for you. We're going to Seattle with all of them. You've in, lost your in, mind. In the end of July. <laughs> you have lost your goddamn mind. Well, yeah. How much crack cocaine do you do during the day? I must have done a bunch. You better get some if you're going to do that again. Let me let me tell you a story about our trip. Andy's oldest son is probably as analytical as a young man as I've ever been in my life. I mean, if you tell him something, he wants to be explained. Is that fair, Andy? Mm -hmm. I, and, he, and he knows exactly, and he has he has really good questions. Well, the first thing happened. Did you see the waterfall video of him? Uh, Where Dylan and him and Andy and oh, Zach. Oh, when he fell? Yeah, yeah Dylan yeah, goes down, kid. and I'm like, oh, shit, that other kid fell in the water. <laughs> Hell, that's Reese. He fell in, scraped his face up. Then we go to the, we get to the house that night, and we're sleeping, and we have a two-story house on the beach there. And we have two bedrooms upstairs, or one downstairs, and a bedroom upstairs. Well, Andy and Jesse and the boys stayed upstairs. They had a pool out up there, and we all stayed on the bottom. Well, their queen size or king size beds are not fat boy queen size beds. Yeah. So Jeff, they had these automatic bed that you plug in this air up bed, and I plugged it in in the, in the living room basically. And the living room kitchen was one big area, and that's where I slept at. I was laying, I was gonna sleep down there that night. So I'm in that thing bed, and I hear this noise, and look up. Well, here's comes Reese walking in, and Reese comes up, and he's like. Hey, Judge, where, where, where's my mom? I go, huh? He goes, my mom's missing. I can't find my mom. Huh? I'm worried about my mom. He's just going, Hester. I said, your mom's fine. Well, she's gone. I'm thinking, I bet fucking Andy and Jesse snuck down to the beach or they're in the hot tub or something. <laughs> that's been fun. That's what I was thinking happened. <laughs> and I said, huh? I said, well, where's your dad? Oh, he's there, but my mom's gone. I go, your mom's not gone. And he said, well, I'm going to sleep with you. I said, okay. So I put the covers. He gets back in. I said, you know what we need to do? We need to go tell your parents where you're at. I don't want them to freak out and wake up in the middle of the night. So we walk out the back door, and Andy comes down these stairs. The only way to get from the upstairs to the downstairs was outside. had a little, a little uh, stairway coming down. And Andy comes around there, and Andy's eyes are as big as I, they're, they're, they look like that black guy on Caddyshack right before the boat <laughs> runs over him. His eyes are big. Yeah. And Andy goes, well, well, Reese, where the hell have you been? What's going on? What are you doing down here? <laughs> Reese had slept walking. He, he had climbed over the balcony. And had come down in, and fell on the stairs and came into the room. He was, had sleepwalking. Shit. So Andy bombarded the door, had it all locked up and shit. Well, that was the first, that was the second issue with him. Third issue, 
we rent a we rent, rent a private boat and we go to this island to go snorkeling. Beautiful water, we're doing it and stuff. Reese gets stung by a jelly bean, a, a jelly bean, a jellyfish. You know what the cure to a jellyfish is? To yeah, piss in? on it. Andy, what'd you do to your son? I peed on it. <laughs> yeah. He had to pee on him on the beach. <laughs> Did you get video of that? I didn't know about it until after. But that's that's the kind of trip that we had on that deal. Uh, and th- then we almost saw a Chinese guy die. They had they had this river going and stuff, and there was a rope that swung out. You're worried about the, the cut. Is it cutting in and out? I'm just go, yeah. Okay. So anyways, they got this swinging rope, and we'd swing into this river. And these people did it, and this little girl in a little thong did it that's about 18. And this, this kid that grew up there, shit, he was doing double and triple back flips into the water and going off this cliff and doing it and shit. This Chinese tourist guy goes there, and he's going to do it. And so me and Andy and Zach, like all good human beings, we're going to watch him crash. I mean, yeah. he's going to crash down. And I'm guessing this is probably telephone pole high up. And that son of a bitch goes off that rope, and he leaves before the rope's all the way off that water. And that son of a bitch missed the cliff by about a half an inch. Yeah. And rocks all the way down Dang. there. That Chinese guy's eyes were just like Andy's eyes when they were done. Them <laughs> son of bitches were the size of a damn basketball, both of them. Goggle-eyed. Yeah. And he come out and he told his girlfriend, oh, yeah, and he was putting oh, his hand ah, up. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. I'm like, damn, Andy goes, we better go for it. We're going to watch a murder. But it was it was, it was was a very fun vacation, but the grandkids do wear you out. Yeah. So yeah. what's going on in the world of Clay Reed? You are doing right now, you're trying to shoot a coyote every day of the year. Yes. What day is this right now? Today was 153. You yeah, shot a coyote 153 days in a row? 153 yep. days. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book at the end of the year. And on January 1st, I, which I've been wanting to write a book for a long time, but I don't know what the fuck I was thinking on January 1st. But on January 1st, I said, I'm going to try to kill a coyote every day for a year. Mm-hmm. And realistically, I, I know, you know, there's going to be a day that I, right. I miss. And I actually did on day 80. Because I had a uh, uh, my gun screwed up. I had a, I got a new thermal and blah blah blah. Missed four couch twelve times at night. And uh, hell, the next day my gun wouldn't shoot a two by a three foot by two foot board. But but yeah, I was going to kill a coyote every day for a year, or at least try to and see how many times I could do mm-hmm. that. And that sounds like. Hey, that'll be cool. You get to hunt every day. Bullshit. Well, it, it just happened to coincide with the worst winter that I've ever had in 25 years as far as of running that ranch. We, we're drought. I got a bunch of old cows. Uh, I mean, just, and no grass. Usually I'll feed once or twice a week. I was having to feed every day. I was having to pull dead cows out of tanks every day. I mean, it was assholes and elbows. Uh, shipping yearlings, <laughs> branding calves. I mean, been assholes and elbow and then so you you get up early you go to work and then you get home you get rewarded after a long day of work i gotta go kill a coyote so i go out and stay out all night and then you know january we had them snow Mm -hmm. and i remember i think three diets in a row was like 10 degrees snow blowing in i mean blowing in 30 mile an hour wind and i'm out there in the middle of the night damn night trying to kill a cow walking across wheat fields, you know, because I got thermal. And matter of fact, I, I pulled up there on one tail. There was a, there's a god dang giant. It was a dead pit. And uh, on the, the dead pit was on the north part of this lagoon. And that lagoon dam was like straight up, like 10, 12 foot. Well, the damn snow was drifting over it. Well, I claw up it and I get to the top and I fall down. I crawl up it and I'd fall, slide back down. I was mad and shit. And then on the third time of busting my ass, I, I laid there and I thought, well, shit. Well, I'm laying here. I took my scanner and I scanned around. There's a goddamn coyote, not 30 yards, sitting on his ass watching the whole show. <laughs> and I, boom! And I killed his ass. But yeah, it's been. But I've killed 170. I think that's 171 or two coyotes since January 1st. Do you think that you have an addictive personality? Because yes. when you, like, you're 100% on anything that you do, just like the running thing. Yeah, well, I'm hard-headed, if addictive means hard-headed. Right. When I set my mind to doing something you're, and, you're and do really. It. Or die trying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, everybody, oh, you ain't going to do that. And I said, I'll, I'll do it. You're like and, that, Andy. And, and but, I've, but for me, once I turn 50, I've got to challenge myself like that running that marathon. Mm-hmm. I've got to push myself 
Because if not, you allow yourself to get stale. And next, sure. if you get stale, you get fat, and you don't. Your mind slows down. So I, I try to, you know, I played when I was 48 years old. I was quarterback on a goddamn old timers <laughs> football team with a bunch of 20 year old kids. And they, oh, you're gonna get hurt out there. I said there ain't a fucking thing on this football <laughs> field gonna hurt me any worse than that ranch does every goddamn day. Yeah. And uh, but. So, but you gotta. Have you noticed um, coyotes are getting bigger, body size? Not up in my country. They're they're still about average, but we. Uh, I but can't you guys out here, y'all are period. Well, they said the helicopter. Wyman. Yeah. Oh, they said the helicopter pig hunting. Yeah, he. he There's so much them. more protein now that's readily available for coyotes to just eat any time, and they're getting. Well, They've added five, I, ten pounds. I don't think that's a bunch of more shit. Well, he, he does a study every year, and he collects them mm. and does them. He does a lot of shit, but I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fan. I don't give a right. shit if he knows or not. But uh, Anyways, the, the, the deal is that the coyotes had grown by 20% over a 40-year period by the ones they'd studied out here. Well, uh, hell, that's, hell, I can write anything I want in a book, and, and, and that don't mean it's true. Yeah. What is, what is your book going to consist of? Well, I like I say, all these days— it's just fodder, basically, for stories of, you know, 50 years of hunting coyotes, you know, since I was a little kid all the way up, you know, Mitch, leaving the, leaving old, my hunting partner in a blizzard, or, you know, just, just a little bit, and, and plus, I'm keeping track of all the data through there and all that, but, I mean, they, they, them guys, you know, they on, on, try to do all these coyote deals and say all this bullshit it ain't fucking rocket science man i mean <laughs> i mean a coyote is a coyote and they're, they're the same coyote as they was got you know you get out west they get small you get out uh, east they get uh, bigger and it, and it is about nutrition and all that but i've been hunting these son of a bitches solid and all over and hell they're, they're still small out this way and they're still big that way do uh you've killed 173 and you've done it basically in a 20 mile circle probably is that pretty correct no no i have killed 173 and probably out of 173 i'll guarantee 125 of them are in a three mile circle okay really? have you noticed a, yes have you noticed a drop off in the population then no that's what's crazy about <laughs> it right that crazy. was my point right there yeah that's what's crazy the other night you know you always have your down nights you know da 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 well the other night uh we counted 31 out there on that one wheat field where I've been killing a shit. I bet that one wheat field, I've killed probably 90 on that son of a bitch. And there was 31 out there. And, I mean, they just they just cut. But like I say, you know, I, uh, a lot of guys over the years, you know, I've seen rap books and all that. They if, When they hunt, I'm not going to hunt here when I killed this cow here right. and I killed his mate here because that place is barren or they won't be out fucking retarded i said <laughs> what, what was good for uh this cow is good for the next cow right. and old joe bob you know and there's two different types of cows you know there's them cows that mate for life and then there's nomad cows and them nomad cows you know they've collared one that run you know he went like 700 miles Shit. in a stretch they just roam and uh you know you you got your uh, monogamous married guys, and then you got your Sean Morrison's of the world. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna fuck them all, man. We're gonna go everywhere. But he was on the 911 rape call, right? You got damn right, but he's still looking for. Him. But <laughs> I wonder if there's if 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 shooting coyotes on this particular piece of property does something to their breeding and and maybe puts them into heat quicker. Yeah, whenever I, I, the I population goes down. Yeah, you know. You know, it's always been said, and I believe that a cow will uh, have litters of pups, a can, can, uh, based on the conditions. Conditions of the, the drought, the whatever. Drought. If you're in the drought, right. they're going to have five. Right. And if it's lots of grasshoppers, lots of, you know, because a lot of people don't realize if you got good grass uh, grasshopper population in the summer. Your cow population is going to be uh, big time really? come the fall because they eat grasshoppers and they don't have to work as hard. Them females don't have to work as hard to feed them goddamn little pups. Them pups will eat them goddamn grasshoppers like crazy, yeah. and uh, and it keeps them. They don't have to work nearly as hard. Well, right. up until about two weeks ago, grasshoppers were going to be pretty thin around here. I thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, now they're they're coming up quick, but 
But yeah, I wonder if they eat crickets too, or is it just grass? Oh yeah, almost any, oh, yeah. So you, any kind of insects. Yeah, you see them son of bitches under the street light in town. When I live in town, you catch them under them. They love you know because them them lights draw all them crickets and I mean they'll right. just gorge Cr- themselves. Those on. are good for turkeys and quail too. Uh huh. Yeah. Which coyotes also. You know like. that's what's going to be interesting this year is after killing all you know by the time of the year end of the year I'll will have killed probably four hundred coyotes. And uh, if I kill 400 coyotes in that little circle up there, I'm curious to see what it's going to do for the deer population and what it does for the uh, rabbits, everything, turkey, uh, Mm -hmm. you know. It ought to be. You're you're in the woods a lot. You see a lot of stuff. And I trust your judgment. So I'm going to ask you a question. How many deer do you think actually get eaten by a coyote? Not not a little fawn that just is born. A bunch. What and 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 you've seen this, right? Yeah. And, okay. and up until this deal, I started to deal. You know, with thermal. Since I got thermal, I can watch how these coyotes move. You know, everything they do at night. And uh, because, like I say, I'll take off. I got lots of wheat fields, so I would. I've walked. I've walked as far as thirteen miles in a night. You know, try. I've got into this. You know. I'm a coyote caller, but since I got this thermal shit, I have turned it, the spot and stalk game is it's just like a chess match with a coyote. And I mean, it, it's cool. But at the same time, I get to see how these coyotes move, how they react with everybody, you know, and see some. Oh, I guess it's about March. I get over there south of 82 on Republican Road. I go in there and I'm walking. I've done walk about a mile or so, and I see one of my big 1,200 cow, pound cows out there, and I can see she's under distress, and I can see her for like a half mile, but I can't see the coyotes. I can't see what's going on yet until I get closer. Well, they, it looked like a National Geographic uh, deal. You see them wolves work a, a buffalo. Mm-hmm. They were trying to take this 12, and there she's healthy, perfectly healthy, perfect, I mean, just fine. And uh, they were working her ass just like him wolf does, in and out, in and out, seven of them. And if, hell, if I wouldn't have got there, hell, there ain't no telling what they got. And this is a big, giant cow. So there ain't s- no telling how many god dang, which I knew they messed with my calves, and I knew that, you know, but you don't really no, know. It's not like a wolf that you think of with it. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I've never seen a cow on a cow ever i saw i saw a cow uh, by patrol you one time a calf in the pond and there was three coyotes had her and then the i knocked on the rancher's door and he went down there that's yeah. the only time i've ever seen it but in the woods i've seen dead deer and stuff i know they get some fawns yeah but i didn't know if they're quick enough to get an actual deer oh yeah <coughs> oh yeah they them so because i mean they they work them just like them wolves and uh and but the bunches that there is you know i get you get 31 coyotes and that's just it, that one time. I, hell, I, me and Gage Porter was out there one night, and we couldn't count all the coyotes out there. It's it's unbelievable. How many? Uh, is there a lead dog there? Like a coyote? Like, like there's an alpha male in the Oh, absolutely. Pack. Yeah. And so there every, is an alpha every, coyote. Every little deal. You know, and what's cool is I got an old dead pit out there that deal, but they always got them a sentry dog. That sentry dog is. You know, and they'll, and I mean, it's, you remember the old cartoon where old uh, Wiley e. Coyote and that sheepdog? Mm-hmm. Yes. Morning, George. Bye, yep. John. You know, they yeah, go exactly. back and forth. That's, I mean, that, like here, hell, that wasn't but a, two or three weeks ago. And of course, time gets away. I, 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 I walked in there a half mile, had to get in to walk to the wind, work my way to the wind, come in. It's pitch back dark. And I, I'm using this pump jack as a, uh, to hide my silhouette. You know, because I got the the light pollution of town back behind me, so I've got to use. I got to get to that point to where I can come walk in line. Because up on top, they got the dead down here, and there's six coyotes down there eating on that dead. But old old sentry dog, he's up top. There'll always be that dog. He sits Just there watching. up top watching everybody. And I worked my way in. When he looked this way, I'd, I'd take five, ten steps. This took like an hour and a half. Should have popped him. Well, I, I got, I'm trying to get within uh, uh, shooting distance. You know, we're talking a long ways off. I mean, them so much can see into the night like like crazy. And uh, so anyway, I finally, well, by the time I get to where I can shoot him, 
Okay, tag. One of the coyotes has been eating a while. He comes up there and takes his exact spot, and that guy gets to go. He's just like he's punching the clock. Hey, All right, now it's my turn. Taking turns. We've got our first question for you. Uh, We've got two questions. First one is, how many states have you killed a coyote in? That's, let's see here. All right, I got, I got Texas, Oklahoma, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Nevada, Mississippi, uh, Mississippi. Did I say one? Yeah, I guess eight, eight states. Eight, eight, eight states. states. Okay. Second, uh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I'm like I say, I'm hoping to change at this. I'm trying to figure out which one. Well, me and me and a uh, buddy of mine, Hunter Rigdon, we're going to Cody, Wyoming, uh, July eighth, ninth, and tenth. So I'm hoping I'm gonna get Idaho. Because, you know, it's close enough. I can jump over to Idaho. We're at Wyoming. Well, you can and be. That's going to be a long jump in some places. Cody, Wyoming. Co How far is Cody to Idaho from there? Uh, you going through Yellowstone? Far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. This, you know, Cody's on this side. Right. Cody's right up there in that northwest corner of Wyoming. West and beautiful country up there. Oh, yeah. I've never been there. but Oh, it's pretty. Yeah. What about Montana? Uh, that's where I'm going to try to go over to Montana. You got a place lined up yet? Oh, uh, somebody listening to this. If you got coyotes in Idaho, Wyoming or Montana, let Clay know. Well, I got some friends in most every state and I'm going to, uh, try to think who I got in Montana. Okay. I got somebody, but guy texted me or messaged me and says, uh, he wants to know about this lesbian bar. He says, ask him to tell you about the lesbian bar. Lesbian? How many, how many lesbian bars have you been to? Lesbian bar? He said lesbian. You're a lesbian, so. I am a lesbian, but I don't remember being in a lesbian bar. <laughs> I need to go back. Uh, <laughs> lesbian bar. And one of your old girlfriends got a question for you, too. Oh, God damn. No, I'm just kidding with you. Ah, man. <laughs> man, now we're going to get to a lesbian bar. I'm lesbian trying, bar. He's going to have to uh, clarify that a little bit. It's Road 95. Ask him to tell you about the lesbian bar. Road 95? Yeah, whoever Road 95 is. How many lesbian bars have you been to, Clay? I don't know that I've ever been to a lesbian <laughs> bar. Unless you count Stetson's as a lesbian bar. Uh, there were some lesbians there, maybe. Okay, here's another question. What's the weird, and I think I already know this, what's the weirdest experience or thing you've ever seen coyote hunting? Now, this has got to be the Kadane Corner story. Seen or? or I think went, the Bigfoot. Or, that's what yeah, I'm saying. The that big, was the yeah, the Corner. Bigfoot deal. Definitely deal, because I've never been back to that spot again. And I, ain't I drove by it. there not long ago, and I thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Scott Hampton, he, he sent me a message today. Hey, man, I want to go where the uh, 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 call where the Bigfoot is. I said, well, good thing is uh, the old ex-secretary of state owns that place now. They got armed guards all the way around that son of a bitch, so can't get on the son of a bitch anyway, but I wouldn't go even if I could. Now, you... That's uh, Dr. Dean's old place. Yeah. Hutch and Macklemore were with you, weren't uh -huh. they? Tell the story because yeah. some people, there's new, we got a ton of new oh, listeners. Oh, yeah. Well, they, uh, this story here they want to hear, and a guy asked me if you would please tell the story again about your buddy getting a divorce because you went to the titty bar. That's the best Clay Reed story ever. Oh, yeah, where you watch your sister titty <laughs> yeah, You know what yeah. I tell you? You want to yeah. get into that story. But anyway, the, the, the Bigfoot story was we we uh, we were in a uh, uh Graham hunt back in the day, back when Graham was really big in the heyday. Me, Wayne, and uh, Mitch. Well, there's this little old place over there by Beaver Creek, and there's a, like a 30 acre wheat field, and it and Beaver Creek loops all the way around it. Well, every time we'd pull out in the middle of that 30 acres, we'd make this call, and all the way around it's just, just thick as gnarly as trees and brush and briars and you can't even walk through it you know because I've, I've had to push cattle out of it before so anyway we pulled in there at four o'clock one morning and we stopped and uh because we always call up a cat right there and we needed a cat we call made the call cat comes in boom we kill him and i was like all right good deal and i walk out there to get him hutch and mitch are up in the rack and i walk out there to get him a hutch holler well how big is he i said i don't know he ain't very big but he's 50 points that's all i care and then about that time you hear this <laughs> sound like somebody something was ripping a branch off of a tree and then all of a sudden it finally gives and it, pow, and it popped boy and i stood there a minute and i looked up <laughs> my buddies up in the rack and i said hey what the fuck was that no man said i don't know it sounded like a 
a tree been ripped off, a branch been ripped off the tree. And I said, yeah. Wayne, he got in that truck. So <laughs> Wayne was already in the truck. <laughs> but Clay was there pretty fast. So I, I run that goddamn truck, and I got up and I said, what the fuck was that? And then so I take my hand call, and I blow that hand call. And every time I would blow that hand call, that some bitch would hit the, the side of a tree. It sounded like you hit a baseball bat up the side of the tree. Pow, pow, pow. I said, what the fuck is that? And I said, you can't walk through that shit. And then I'm, every time I blow, did blow that some bitch about four or five times, and he did it every time. And I said, I don't know what the fuck it is, but we're getting the fuck out of here. I said, <laughs> and so we left, went on, we went hunting later. Well, when I got home, I guess that was, you know, like early Sunday morning. We went to the deal, and that night I get on there. They had a, uh, you know, back then everything was computer forms. You know, you had them deals. We had yeah. Texas Predator Posse. Well, I wrote the story. I said, boys, y'all ain't a coyote caller until you call up the Bigfoot. Last <laughs> night we called up just shitting, you know. Well, and, and we all laughed about it. Well, then about that time, this guy named John Dickey with the Texas Bigfoot Research Center, he sends me a private message. He said, Clay, I want you to listen to these recordings. And there was like 12 different recordings that they'd been recorded all over the goddamn United States. And I mean, it was exactly what we fucking heard that night. And he said, well, that's a classic tree knock. He said, that's a, that's a warning that uh, you need to get out of there, Terry. I said, well, it worked like a motherfucker. We were gone. I said, yeah, I guarantee you, I look like a Usain Bolt getting the goddamn pick up. And uh, so uh, he said, so we went on, and, and he took my statement, and they put it on the research deal. Well, the next morning, on Monday morning, we all go, back then, we used to go to the cafe there at Canaan Corner, and we was all sitting there, and all my cowboy buddies, and we was laughing about it, and I told them the story. Yeah, you dumb motherfucker, you call them goddamn. I said, oh, yeah, goddamn right, I did. You know, I was, I was relishing in the fact that I was a great caller. But still, at the time, it was still kind of a joke. But I knew something down there what wasn't normal, and... uh but uh, anyway, they all wind up eating and leaving. I finished eating my legs, and there's an old boy right next to across the table from me named Jerry. Well, he's the pumper on that well that's down there where we called up to Bigfoot. And he don't ever say five words. He sits over there, eats his eggs every morning, but he never says five words. Got to be a boring life. Yeah. he want, Well, he just he takes listens. all that knowledge. Yeah, yeah he, he's taking he, out. He's, he's probably the smartest motherfucker in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All the knowledge he, there, huh? Yeah, damn right. He has absorbed the bullshit. So, uh, so anyway, he, he sits there and he is, you know, I'm eating my eggs, and all of a sudden he lifts his head. He goes, I seen that Bigfoot. And I said, do what? He said, I seen him down there. I said, when? He goes, 1992. And I seen him in 1976 down here by the concrete bridge by Lake Diversion. I said, bullshit. Believe what you want. I said, well, here, let's hear your stories. Well, you come off that hill to go down in that bottom, come off that bottom, there's a well right there. I said, yeah, I know exactly where he is. I come off that well. And he said, when I got to the bottom, that some bitch walked 50 feet in front of my pickup, stood right in the middle of the road. And then walked off in the mesquite's oh, headed west. Up on my I'm arm. telling you, and he said, I said, bullshit. He goes, you believe what you want. He went back to eating them goddamn eggs. And then, uh, and he, but he, he, he still That's swear. the worst thing that somebody can say. Well, you just believe what you want. Because then you're like, motherfucker. You know they're not just, bullshitting you then. Well, well if it had been yeah, anybody but, else, uh, you know, I might have. But he did, this guy, don't, he don't even say five words. He doesn't have He has no reason to bullshit you. And then, and what's, what's funny is, you know, ever since I've told... This story, because I don't give a shit if people think I'm crazy, because I'm fucking crazy anyway. So right. I don't mind telling the story. But uh, but I have told it up, this story, and people have opened up their own experiences to me. Like that one buddy of mine, that uh, elk guide up there in Colorado, they were 37 miles back in the middle of fucking Colorado, in the middle of nowhere. It was him, four guys, guides, and eight clients with the mules, you know, going back there on the deal. And he said, well, some bitch walked across out there in front of them and a uh, hundred yards in an open meadow. And he said, not one of them, some bitches said a word about it then yeah. or even later. Here is the Bigfoot uh, tree knock. Uh, knocked on the tree three knocks. And these are so distinct knocks. Now if, I, it. It, it, now, if I get up and I run, 
I have flashbacks here. I didn't hear nothing. I, I think this guy's that. full of shit. Did you hear that? No, I didn't. You're full of shit. You're full of shit, fella. Yeah. Amber Heard's crying somewhere. I'll try. Oh, shits and giggles. I just heard two tree mountains. Well, I'm going to tell you what. That Lake Diversion that, shit back there, though, that river between Diversion and Kemp, if you haven't ever been back there, and I was back there in the 80s hunting. Yeah. That's no man's land. Back then, especially not like it is now where they have the oil field traffic and shit. Back then, yeah. there was nothing there. Yeah, there ain't shit back there now except abandoned houses. It's really That's gotta wild. Be a, they, they could be forming a fucking horror movie back there now. You ain't shitting. Yeah, because my buddy, he went down in there the other day. Okay. The guy, it's Randy, the guy that won the hunt. We're going to raffle off another hunt with Clay. I'll start selling the tickets n tomorrow. We can pay pal goose at westtex.net. Six tickets for 100. Give away a two-day hunt with Clay this fall. Randy, that hunted with you from Kansas, said maybe it, it him and his cold hunted with you. He said maybe it was a gay bar instead of a lesbian bar. A gay bar. Oh, he's the one that's doing it? No, 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 no. He he's, asked the question? He, he asked the question, yes. Uh, he said you told them a story about a gay bar. A gay bar. Give us some idea, Randy. Cause <laughs> oh, he he's no, he's talking about when we uh, I, I went to the, yeah, that was a funny shit. It's got to <laughs> it's got to be the, the same one, I, I think. We didn't really know it. Was, I, I, I don't know if it's a gay bar, but there was a lot of gay motherfuckers in it. <laughs> I, I, we went to a democratic uh, convention. We went to a, a you know feedlot manager uh, seminar deal. You know vet reps. You know talking about medicine bullshit and all that. Well, Doug Dunkel, he sends me down there to this deal. And uh, so we, they schmooze us. We're at the Hilton or across from the Arlington Park, you know, Texas Ranger, because we're going to the Ranger game at that. Well, I wind up getting there right off the bat. You know me, I'm always early. I get there early that day. Well, I'll be goddamn for any guy that was a little bit earlier than I was named Sean Wright from Waco Feeders. Well, me, me and him introduced, and then I go to buy a beer, and he goes, oh, no, all the beer's free. We got a stick. I said, no shit. This could get dangerous, <laughs> and it did. So we get we get up there, and uh, uh, so anyway, we uh, we're sitting there in this bar, and we we get kind of liquored up pretty good. Well, then everybody gets there, and they said, "Hey, we're going to go to Papa Do's. We're going to go to Papa Do's and uh, get something to eat." So we all go over to Papa Do's, and we get over there, which it was cool. And then all of a sudden. Uh, well, we're waiting in fucking line. There's a goddamn line. They got to get us a big giant table. Well, when we're sitting there, they got a three-piece mariachi band, and uh, they're sitting there. Well, these girls come over and they got this big, big old giant drink. I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was good. It's like a strawberry <laughs> something. And I drank, I drank me one of them some bitch. So now I am prime. I am rare form. So I, I grabbed the mic from the three-piece mariachi band. I said, y'all know any Elvis? And I got up on, I crawled up on these customer's table up there, and I sang, it's now or never, <laughs> come hold me tight. Yeah, I mean, I got to it. They, everybody clapped. It was a fun deal. And then after that, they finally get us their table. We get in there at our table, and, of course, you know, we're all a bunch of guys, you know, having guy time, you know, away from the old ladies. Well, this good-looking little old blonde-headed gal comes up there, and she leans down and says, Sir, and I'm looking at her like she says, uh, what are you going to have? And I said, well, are you on the menu? Because if so, I'm going to have some of your ass. And, when, and I'm looking up like this, and all of a sudden, and I'm just kidding, all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden like somebody's got me by the shirt and drags me across the table. And this guy named Forrest from Snyder, Texas or something, feeders out there. And, I mean, this son of a bitch is like 130 pounds. He's got me by my collar, drags my ass across the deal. He said, Mr., where I come from, we treat women with respect. And I grabbed that goddamn <laughs> little, little bitty hand of his, and I broke that son of a bitch over, and I said, Mr., where I come from, we beat the fuck out of people that grab her goddamn collar. <laughs> you know, no, he went to pharmacy up, John. He's oh, he diverted the tragedy. <laughs> well, old Forrest, he was the outcast of the cool group from then on out. So anyway, but it gets better leading up to the gay bar deal. Because we, we go to Casey's Corner. You know where Casey's Corner is in the old ballpark? Yes, yes, Down yes. Down at do. right field line. Yes. Got our own bar. We got our own food on there. We're all sitting there. And uh, anyway, we're out on the front deal. And we get on the jumbo trom, me and old Sean. We do a little dancing and then. Uh, we're drunk and all of a sudden i look over my shoulder and there's this uh, uh a black lady and a blonde lady good looking old gal well some guys kicking them out of our damn 
out of our suite. I'd jump over and I'd say, hey, you don't want to ever goddamn kick good-looking women out of our goddamn suite, you motherfucker. And so I, I said, ladies, y'all, I said, well, we're just trying to get through. Y'all, y'all welcome them in our bar any goddamn time. So they come up there, me and O'Shawn, we go talking to them, bullshitting with them. Well, you could tell these girls have never in their lifetime experienced anything like Clay Reed or Sean Wright. And they, they're they laughing, of course, and it doesn't help. But we're really animated because we're really... I'm not as bad as Sean, but I got a pretty good buzz going on. And Osho Pony is working the stage. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, he said, guys, y'all have got to come down here and meet our husbands. And it turned out these gals, one of them's uh, husband is the executive producer of, of CBS Sports. Really? Yeah. And they've got their own suite down there. And I said, yeah, y'all got to come down here. So I go down there and... Uh, that we we walk in the deal when there's a whole bunch of people in there, right? Well, as I get in there, how you doing? You know, we're taking our hats off. How you doing? Well, all of a sudden, there's this one gal over there, and she's wearing wearing one of them skin tight like a uh, uh, summer dress, you know, mm-hmm. the kind you like. Yeah, yeah, and you know, dress, but skin tight, white, ain't a blemish on this son of a bitch, white, white. She got these big, giant, fake titties sticking out of this son of a bitch. God bless them. Exactly. And I was like, how do you do that? <laughs> and, uh, well, I shake her hand take my hat. Well, old Sean, just about the time he grabs her hand, he has a sinus attack, and he starts sneezing, and he's got, it's, can't, can't let go of her. I see, I see, I see, I see. He blowed fucking green boogers <laughs> all over that goddamn bitch's white ass deal, and she can't get away from it. <laughs> and I mean, everybody in there was laughing except for old Blondie in the white dress. She was not having it. And I said, I, I, I said he's going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, I'm going to take my boy. I said, he's got to go to bed. So we wind up leaving. All right, so the Ranger game's over. So now we go back to the Hilton. We get into this hill. I'm staying man. there this weekend. Yeah. Well, don't. If they're <laughs> playing Macho Man, it, it ain't, yeah, because we walk in this little lounge. It's called Spirits. Spirits. We go to Spirits, and we're the laying. Arlington Hilton. Uh, yes, that's right across from the ballpark. Okay, no, we're going to one yeah. that's a little bit further away than that. Yeah, it's right across the ballpark. So we we get in there, and it's Spirits. I remember his name's Spirit. We get in there. Like I say, by this time, I'm about damn near twelve hours and drinking, and I'm. I'm ready to go fucking bed, you know. I, and well, I, of course, old show pony, they want show pony to go to titty bar with them. I said, yeah, I don't want to go nowhere. So I'm sitting there, and they got a band playing. That should have been a red flag. <laughs> macho, macho man. And I send old Sean. I said, Sean, go get some beer. So Sean leaves and goes get some beer. And I'm sitting there, you know, just half as zombie land. And all of a sudden, you kind of get that feeling that somebody's looking over your shoulder. <laughs> Literally. And, and I, I look behind me, and there's a little gay guy. He got his little hand up on the hip like this. He's got a little drink. He said, you like the band? I said, yeah, they're pretty good. He goes, I know everyone on That's Sergio, and that's Raul, and that's the one. Yeah, I could introduce you to him. I said, nah, I'm, I'm good. And he goes, and, and then all of a sudden, he goes, you want to dance? And I said, I said, No. And about that you time, Sean, Sean, Sean comes walking up. He's got them two beers in his hand. I said, no, but he will. <laughs> and uh, Sean goes, I will what? You want to dance? Let's dance. And he fuck no, you <laughs> faggot motherfucker. Throws both beer balls down, crashes them, and going to whoop this son of a bitch's ass. Bouncers come out of every goddamn corner. And the last time I ever saw Sean Wright in my life, he was handcuffed, and they were giving him the airplane exit out of that summit. <laughs> yeah, I'm <a> fucking faggot. <laughs> I mean, he's mad. But still, so now I've never still seen get, the guy since then. Huh? You've never, never seen me? No, I didn't. Never seen any of these guys. And, and, yeah, these, these guys. You know, every ag guy in America is a, a Texas A and M graduate. All right, we, we're Pretty at this much. table, and I fucked up, and I said, "Hook them horns," and I. You fucking egg! You're a goddamn ranger and you're a fucking goddamn lecturer. Goddamn. And I said, boys, 
I said, I didn't even finish fucking eighth grade. If y'all ever think for a second, I stepped on the, the campus of University of Texas. I said, I like the football team. There's four. I don't give a goddamn shit. They're fucking liberal pussy. They well, got the liberal part right, but I'm, I'm a Texas guy too. So yeah. I understand. I always tell them the same thing. You didn't have grades to get in Texas. Don't get all worked up. <laughs> well, me, I just, hell, I, I like Texas. Well, since I was little, Texas Longhorns was my, my team. But I like Aggies. I like SMU. You're going to support anybody I, from Texas. You're goddamn right. I'm, Today, the best, the only women's college sport I like is the College Softball World Series. Yeah. Your daughter sells softball. It's a great game. It's a great game. And Texas Longhorns. And the Longhorns beat the shit out of UCLA, UCLA. today. And I watched that today, and I was happy to say that. I didn't that. tell you right before I showed up here. Today. We always play a game of try to guess which one's not the lesbian on the team. And that's hard to do. That is hard to do. Yeah, um, and see, that's what Soft got talk? my daughter because yeah. she was the gal that they thought was a lesbian. But she was in college. <laughs> yeah, because Haley was buff. You know, she's big like me. She's got to wear a bow in her hair. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's what – she didn't know that. Oh, you got to. <laughs> yeah, she got that memo. <laughs> she, she was right wearing a bow. Her, her roommate was, I mean, drop dead gorgeous. And uh, – but she was a lesbian. <laughs> and she wore the little uh, uh, ribbon in her hair. So, Haley wore the ribbon in her hair, too. And then one day she was uh, going to eat lunch with a with a uh, baseball player. And, and she goes – said something about – all right, well, I got to go call my boyfriend. And the baseball player goes, your boyfriend? She says, yeah, he, da, 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 he plays football for, you know, uh, that's when he was at uh, Air Force. He played football for Air Force again. You got a boyfriend? I thought you were gay. Now, why the fuck would you think I was gay? Well, you wore the ribbon. You wore the ribbon. <laughs> I would have missed that memo, too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I heard I'm, you had a real good-looking little well, gal last what's year. What's funny is – uh, Haley and them had a, a gal on her team named Nash. She was a lesbian, and she was buff. I mean, cut, black, black gal from Uganda. Or what, I don't know where she's from. Uganda. But, but, man, she I mean, she had that accent. I don't know where she from. She, from. she was a hoss, but she loved Haley. And I, told, I brought her, and she, we, she, we, she ate some uh, calf fries for the first time. She loved the calf fries. Yeah. But yeah, the old ribbon in the hair trick. I wouldn't have fucking know. But usually, usually, it's obvious. You, you, you look over there. If they're clear, built like clear, me, clear, yeah. If they built like me, then yeah. Then you know, like the girl that hits all the home runs for Oklahoma. I don't know nothing about her. She's a stud softball player. Yeah. I think she doesn't like men. Yeah. She may. I don't know. But she's a big old girl. And yeah. She knocks the shit out of the ball. But well, th they have that look. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, it, all right. Let's tell the story now. The classic. My favorite. Hold on, before we go on. So, a long time I was watching the softball. Yep. It was Arizona was pitching, and anyway, this chick was a pitcher for Arizona, and I was like, "Oh goddamn, she's smoking hot." Damn it! I mean, good looking girl, you know, yeah. for a softball player. Ribbon in her hair. Well, you've done pissed off all our softball player listeners now. I mean, she's 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 a she smoke. Was, show. She was a good looking gal, yes. And now she's uh, that's her wife. So I'm like, God Almighty, you lied to me. Damn it! I thought she was on the right. What about which Kat? I mean, which I mean, I wouldn't have gotten with her anyway. But no, Kat, she's, she's, a, she's good looking NFL, girl. Yeah, yeah. Taryn a, Taryn Mowat was her. Yeah, name. but Cat was Cat well, Osterman was the girl's name, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who married Cat Osterman? She married an NFL player. I can't remember. It. Cat the one Osterman? I like is yeah. Jenny Finch. Oh, Jenny yeah, was Jenny. a smoke Ooh. show too. In a I loved it when she struck old Albert Pujols out. Yeah, yeah. softball. Yeah. Well, there was like several of them that they wind up. Uh, I don't know who she is? Yes, yeah, she, she played a long time ago for Texas. Yeah, I don't think she's that hot. Well, hell, she just went. Well, she to the used to look better Olympics. a long time ago. She come out of retirement. Yeah, y'all must have had bad TV connection. She was good looking when she was in hot. That, in that bitch has a five head, Jeff. Mm. Yeah, those are that's those that's are not, not flattering. Better. That's not a very no, flattering picture are, ever. Uh, yeah, that, down here is a little better picture in this corner here. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad right there. Yeah. That's, that's a picture kind of all saw. American girl. Little yeah, you're cutie. talking. You're, you're taking pictures of me. Yeah, yeah. She was. I did her. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I've been fucking nine one one rape call bitches. I mean, everything's up from upgrade. You fucking Olympian is what you're saying. You got damn right. <laughs> Hell yeah. So tell me this. Tell us the story about your buddy getting a divorce. This is my favorite old story of yours. And you, well, you, caused, you caused the divorce. It, I didn't cause a motherfucker. Hell, I was oblivious to what was going on, but I was. I guess I'm guilty by association. 
It started, it was my wife's best friend, still is best friends to this day. We were, went, me and Sam went to the Texas Ranch Roundup during the day. All right, well, at noon, we were supposed to come get, it wasn't my wife, I was dating Kelly, but it was his wife. And we so were he was more, he's into this more than you are, because you can just break up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah he's yeah. he's I'm, fucked this yeah, up. Yeah, I'm just boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. But, and so we were supposed to come pick them up at 11 o'clock and take them to eat lunch. And then we was going to go to the rodeo that night. Well, we screwed up, and we wind up picking up another buddy of ours, which I have been uh, told not to use his name. <laughs> he got mad at me last time, and he's tough son of a bitch, so I don't want to get my ass whooped. But, uh, so, but anyway. He told you not to use his name? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, he don't give a shit, but he was giving me a hard time. But it was one of, yeah, I don't give but really don't. But really, <laughs> yeah. please. And uh, so anyway, me and him, I just use his first name, Gary. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so me, me, Sam, and Gary, all right, we, we leave there and said, hell, let, we done fucking, the wife deal has lost her. We've left it. So we go to the bar. So we go down here downtown. We go to the Little do. We go to the Lonesome Dub Bar. We go all day long. We're in a drink marathon. Well, then finally, after the sun went down, that's a long day in June in yes, Wichita Falls. Yes. Well, finally, when sundown went down. Was they this said, ranch roundup? We started at the ranch okay, roundup. Okay. But like I say, then we graduated. Decided to, we left the trade show and decided to go drink beer. We went over here went to, like I say, bar hopping. Well, then next thing you know, they said, uh, he said, hell, let's go to goddamn Titty Bar. Well, by this time, I am a non-functional unit because I ain't going to lie, I did smoke a doobie. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, remember where we got it, but I remember it was at the Lonesome Dove from somebody. Smoked Doobie, had a lot of goddamn beer in me. So now I am a non-functional unit. And uh, so we go to this little tea bar, and I thought, well, we're going to go Max. And, no, 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 but there's this new bar. There's a new bar down there off Scott Street there, back there behind Baby Dolls. I said, oh, I, <laughs> whatever. So we go back in there. We get back here and it's back in the back alley. You know, you got the big bar and then you got door number two back here in the back alley. So that should have been I've a red been flag. There. That's what's bad. Yeah, yeah. So we go back in there and uh, so we get in there. Well, immediately we get down there on Pervert Row and you're right there next to the stage. We're sitting there and I got Sam to the right, Gary to the left. We sit there and all of a sudden, you know, uh, I hear, you know, the announcer on the deal, DJ, he's a, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> from Wichita Falls, Texas, the lovely Angie. And I turn, and I'll be goddamn if it ain't my fucking sister with her <laughs> big-ass giant titties, goddamn. <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, it blinded me. And I was like, get the fuck, just I know it doesn't know. So, uh, but it turned out to be a pretty good deal because <laughs> hell turned, she was part owner. These strippers had went in and leased this deal and doing her own deal. So I got free beer. Yeah. But every time she danced, I'd go shoot pool and, <laughs> and uh, Sam and Elvin put money or G string. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was it was bad. You might be a redneck if you go watch your goddamn sister strip <laughs> and say big but, old titties. <laughs> yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When was the last time you smoked a doobie? Was that the last time? I smoked a doobie? Yeah. Well, it's been a minute, but not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, probably, we had a guy in town. Uh, that, uh, that <laughs> four or five years ago, my back, I fucked my back up, yeah. and I could not sleep. To help you? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Could not sleep. You know, you, you can't get no relief. And I cannot take muscle relax and all that. Well, I had... One of my local buddies will we <laughs> remain nameless. Yeah, he, this time we yeah, do need to yeah, say yeah, This yeah. time we need he, to, bro. He come in and I said, hey, buddy, got one of them joints. And he gave me a joint. So every night I would go in there and I would smoke one hit off of it. And I'd walk back in the house with a smile, <laughs> grab me a fruit roll up, and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I've got a, we had a guy, we've got a guy in town here. And he was telling me one night, people that get in a lot of trouble in town, they, 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 they talk to me about stuff that they don't talk about a lot of yeah. other people do. So this guy was telling me one night, he's like, yeah, he said, uh, he said, Jeff, he said, you know, he said, everybody in town thinks I'm a big stoner. And he goes, I'm not. He goes, I ain't smoked dope since 
1983 and 84. He said, when I was in college at Tech, he said, I hadn't done any of that shit. But he said, let me tell you something. He goes, another one of our friends, and he told me the guy's name, he said, over at Monday, he said, I was over there one night, and he's like, hey, let, let's smoke a joint. He goes, man, I ain't done that in a long time. He said, oh, come on, let's try it. Just, let's, let's do it again. Come on. He said, I got some of this for my nephew. He said, I thought, well, what the hell, you know? I'm fucking, I ain't going to live forever. <coughs> and he said, I smoked pot with that guy. And he said, I'm going to tell you right now. He said, I told God, I promise God, if you will let me survive the night, I will never in my life ever smoke pot again. He yeah. goes, I could hear my heartbeat. He, oh. goes, he goes, the shit they have today is not like they had that Columbia Dude. Gold from 1983. I'm going to tell you a war story here. I right, hear, I mean... You know what gummy them gummy bears they yes. got now? Uh, gummy. Tony hurt his shoulder in Pot Michigan, gummy. and he had Mother Tony fuck. had three one night. I had a kid that used to play football for me. Now he's a grown ass man, like thirty years old. Well, he comes by my bunkhouse one day. They see me out there working on my trailer, and him and another guy, who will remain nameless, they they stop by my house or my bunkhouse. We go bullshit and we drinking beer with them and all that, and they they smoking dope. And they said, nah, so now nah, I'm good. Uh, well, then all of a sudden he said something about gummy bears. And he, I thought to him, I said, yeah, when I was up in Colorado, I, I thought about trying one of them. Blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh. I said, oh, yeah, man. He's like, yeah, they're, they're fucking awesome and all that. Well, I never thought any more about it. Well, about three weeks later, I pull up to the cafe, eat, come back out. And there's a brand new bag of 1,000 milligram gummy bears in my damn. Is 1,000 milligrams a lot? Apparently so. Okay. Because, <laughs> uh, apparently I don't, I don't know the guy, milligrams and all that shit. I don't know shit. anything, but one buddy told me he took a 250 milligram. He said, he said it was, and it would get, well, I, I'll tell you how, what the 1,000 milligram did to me. So I get I get up there and, and I got these, and it's a brand new bag. And I go, God damn, where the hell they come out? I, I, ain't, I done forgot about my conversation with my two buddies. So I can't figure it. So I take them home and I put them up on the fridge. I, you know, I don't want. In, in my pickup, I get pulled over, there and I figure I'll find out who. Twenty to thirty yeah. is normal. Wow. Uh, well, so anyway, <laughs> that's that stout. Well, it gets worse <laughs> <laughs> because we're sitting there, and uh, well, Lindy happens to be, see them up there. Dad, what are those up there? And I was, hey, I'm innocent. Somebody <laughs> put them in my damn pickup, and I told her da da da. I said I'm just trying, you know, get rid of them. And uh, well, about that time. Uh, uh, I said, hell, I'm going to try one. No, you're not. You Don't you touch. It's Kelly and her are on the couch. We're watching it. I'm going to try one. No, you're not, Dad. You're not. Well, I eat one of them motherfuckers. The whole goddamn thousand thing. thousand milligram. thousand milligram goddamn, what do they call it? It's the black, black hole. <laughs> and I eat that whole goddamn fucking deal. And I thought, yeah, that ain't doing nothing to me. I crawled back up there in my recliner. Well, then, all of a sudden, <laughs> that old smile starts hitting on me. Them old Chinese eyes <laughs> that get there. <laughs> and then I'm like, he's good. I'm so Kelly goes, are you high? <laughs> no, no, no. And I sit there. But it got worse. <laughs> it went from the cool, giggly, and then, oh, my God, I started sweating. I was like, fucking, I, get, I turned white as goddamn sheep. The, sh the world starts fucking going around. You know, I've smoked a million joints in my goddamn lifetime, and I have <laughs> never, ever experienced what I experienced with that goddamn. One, it tasted like shit. It was horrible, <laughs> and I was gagging on it. Well, in about 10 minutes, I am so fucked up. I'm like paraplegic. Oh, <laughs> 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 I got go bad chill. And they're laughing at me. They're laughing. It ain't funny. I don't feel good. I start getting a shake. Well then I can't You overdosed I, on pot. I can't I can't goddamn move. And I I wobble in there to the back bedroom and I get on that bed and, and it was like you're drunk, whiskey drunk, spinning. Yeah, spinning. That's a and bad I mean, feeling. And I'm sweating and I'm white as a sheep and I can feel my goddamn heart every fucking beat going. Brrr. I don't know when it was, but in the middle of the night, that bed I was on, it's a real tall bed. I fell out of that son of a bitch, and not just like rode off of I fell, and it's wood, hit them wood floor. Boom! I hit that fat, my fat ass hit that goddamn deal. <laughs> and then I, I 
Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. I can't get up. I tried to get up. She goes, what is your problem? She's in the other bedroom. I said, oh, you go. I finally get up and I wobble because my equilibrium is so fucked up. And I guess we got to go hospital. And she goes, we are not going to the hospital with you and tell them you ain't a guy. No, this is something else. I got something I else. Broke. I got something else going. I'm sick. I think I'm having a heart attack. I tell her, I mean, it fucked me up bad. I was fucked up. And, and it, it was three days. For three days, I was, my equilibrium, I, I would stumble. And I was like, Okay, we're not digging in, motherfuckers. And then I found out who it was that gave it to him. And then he had a goddamn car wreck about a week after. I said, well, get you. That serves you right, motherfucker. A thousand milligrams. Fucking a thousand a year. That's a lot. Well, then I, I talked to some other guys. I said, oh, God damn, you, you took the whole thing. I said, take a well, yeah. He said, yeah, you cut just little pieces of them out. Well, fuck. I didn't know that. Uh, you know, I, I am, I'm not against marijuana at all. Yeah. I've never even smoked pot. I've never smoked cigarette in my life. I just smoke. I don't like You're smoke. You're in for a treat. But, <laughs> but I think that they need to legalize marijuana. There's so many people that have back aches and neck problems I, and I, don't, that could help them, and I don't Parkinson's. understand. Parkinson's. Yes, but it's I, big I, pharma. That's what it's all about. Yeah, it's a guarantee. <laughs> it is, it's, I can tell you about a buddy of mine. His dad's an uh, old sheriff, ex-sheriff. He, he builds these stuff. I ain't going to give too much weight because I don't want to give his info. But anyway, he, he, he couldn't do what he was doing. He's an old man, but, but he had severe shaking Parkinson. We kept telling him he needed to take it, and his, his son finally got him. And he said, I'm not taking that. You know, I was a sheriff. You know, da, 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 da. Well, finally one day he calls him over to the deal, and he said, look at here. He pulls his old hand out there just steady as can be. Really? No tear run down his damn eye. It cured him. All and he smokes it every day now. But yeah. I wish uh, when when Ron got really sick, you know, they had him on all sorts of shit. I mean, they had him on stuff to wake oh. up, stuff to go to sleep, stuff for his back, stuff yep. for his pain yes. and his feet. And it's just like, I could give, give the motherfucker a joint. So many, so many, for instances, of where it is. A friend of mine who he just finally passed away a few years ago, 68 years old, he got diagnosed with a, a brain tumor when he was 15 years old and give him less than a year to live. Well, he died died at 68 but yeah. he had smoked mo morning noon and night yeah. he smoked a blunt i had a guy that hunts with me that um, owns a big company and i'm not gonna say their name of course but he yeah. told me that he said one of our foremans he said we were talking the same conversation we're having now he's in the office one day and he said one of my foremans guy that's never ever late for work doesn't party doesn't do nothing flunked a drug test He's like, what the? But he said it had to be a mistake. So he said, I call him in the office, like, hey, I just want to let you know right now that there is no way that you that you, something's wrong. They had to get something wrong. He goes, there's no way you you flunked this drug test. We know you too well. And he goes, well, I need to talk to y'all. He goes, uh, and he rolled up his sleeves. He wore a long sleeve shirt every day and rolled up sleeve, and he had his skin was like white and you know like Jimmy Armstrong is, whatever yeah. the hell Jimmy's yeah, got. That, kind of, uh, well, I can't remember the name of it, but something yeah, like that. Alopecia. Uh, no, it's no, something else. It's, uh, it's just a tigo or you know, infantigo. Yeah, no, it's, it's not infantigo. It's something like but that. It's something to that degree. Yeah. Anyways, this guy had that kind of same kind of thing, and he's like, I, I, I hurt every night. My skin hurts like crazy. And he goes, about six months ago, he goes, I, someone gave me this uh, marijuana. Gave me marijuana. I guess it was a, it was actual joint. And he said, vitiligo. What is yeah. it called? Vitiligo. Yeah. And he said, and and I was real skeptical because he said, I don't do that kind of shit. But he said, I smoked a little bit before I went to bed that night. And he goes, you know what? I didn't hurt for three or four days. And he goes, he said, I, he said, I smoke every Monday, every Thursday is my deal. Every two or twice a week, Monday and Thursdays. And that's my go-to. And it keeps me going all week long. I don't hurt no more. <coughs> then the guy said, all right. He goes, we're going to get a waiver on this. And they got a waiver for him because it worked. Oh, but, but, he, but, but he said we had to go. They had to go through some hoops to get Have there. Have you ever watched that show Weed by uh, Sanjay Gupta? Every American in America needs to watch it, Dale. Weed. That, it's called Weed. He did it. He What's did it, it on? two years. He did making this deal. That's the name. Is Weed. What's it and, on? And it's talking about the medicinal purpose. You know, he used to be chief medical examiner. Yeah. And well, he and he was a skeptic. Well, he did a two-year study of his own talking to different people. But the greatest story out, I can give you all the stories there, but the one is there was a little girl from Alabama. They were twins, 
two girls, two, three years old. The one girl was perfectly fine. The other girl had like 300 seizures a day. And she was going backwards. She was going to die. And, you know, she can't live no night. The other girl's running and playing and doing nothing. Well, she'd heard about marijuana helping these seizures. Mm -hmm. So she flies all the way to Colorado where it's legal to these the number one grow guys over there. Right. And they interview these guys. And she tells them, she said, listen. He said, my <laughs> daughter, you know, da-da-da, and tells them stories. He said, man, that's way too we're not giving goddamn marijuana to a bunch of little kids, you know. Right. And then she goes, listen, my kid, my baby's going to die if I don't. So anyway, they took their lowest THC uh, grow that they had, and they milked it. The lowest THC they gave them, you know, all of it. And they made, a, you know, like CBD oil out of it, out of that lowest THC. And they give it to this gal. She goes to the hotel where they, she's staying. And this girl's, this kid's having, you know, like 25 seizures an hour. And she give that little girl one drop under her tongue. First hour, no seizures. Second hour, no seizures. First day, no seizures. It was like 16 days later before she wound up having a, a no seizure. seizure. And wind up basically curing that girl. And she winds up, and her poor old husband, he's off in Afghanistan. They wind up naming that strain of marijuana after that little girl and see it's it's stupid that our country it's criminal is smart. It is, it's, sanjay said it's it, it's criminal for our government to dismiss the medicinal purposes of yes. marijuana I after doing i understand, this understand you don't want a bunch of kids smoking pot eating pizza yeah, driving I, down the road exactly. i got no problem with that yeah. but you know but you don't want a bunch of kids yeah you got a bottle of, of no, jack yeah, daniels yeah. either no that's what i'm do. saying there's laws on that already yeah it's kind of like the gun the gun stuff yeah but chicago they had 40 fucking people shot and 20 people killed <laughs> yeah. this weekend well do you think them guns were purchased legally fuck no they uh -huh. weren't it's the same shit but that's with with this deal with this marijuana they need to Jeez. fix it where people can get help yeah you know I mean, we we, there's going to be people that abuse anything. That's, that's you right. can abuse their you, gambling's legal. Yeah, How many I people have ruined their lives gambling? Man, Tony, yeah, me. Yeah. I McDonald's mean, gonna kill me quicker. Than McDonald's me exactly. Yes. Fast food's legal. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna fucking put you in the grave quicker than a joint. Well, you know where McDonald's first drive-through was? Uh, Akron, Ohio, Cal Fort Watch, Fort Wachuca, Fort Wachuca, Arizona. They had a rule there that the um, somebody's gonna fact check me on this and be wrong. But I read this the other day. Oh, I watched that, the movie. That uh, <laughs> well, no, I saw the movie too. It's a good yeah. show about it. How yeah. it all came about. That was good. But the first drive-through was because military people were not allowed to wear their uniforms off base for a while because of some stuff going on. And so in Fort Huachuca, which is just a, was an Army intelligence base, they built a drive-in just so the guys could could come through there and still come eat there. Ah, oh, but anyway. but, uh, but uh, the marijuana deal. This, this. Well, we were in Puerto Rico. Michelle hurt her neck bad, 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 bad. And they had a dispensary and a, a shopping medical. center, a medical dispensary there. Yeah. And I thought, fuck, I'm gonna go over. It's just like being in Colorado, or Michigan. I'm gonna go over and get Michelle some gummies or something so she can yeah. so she'll quit hurting. It's not for recreation. Fuck him, gummies. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> they, they, they caught me at the door. Yeah. The guy said, uh, "I need your ID and a, your card, please." I go, "Huh?" So I pulled out a Visa card. Medical. And my dealer goes, no, I need a medical card. So like a, my insurance, because I don't think Pivot Health is going to pay for this. He goes, <laughs> and he goes, no, no, you got to have a medical card here. I said, okay. I said, no. Oh, I said, we live out of state. My wife hurt her neck. I was just going to get something. Yeah. <coughs> I can't get a guy to call in a prescription for a hydrocodone. I'd rather get her this. Fuck, yeah. And that's bad too. Yeah, it's, it's worse. No, I mean, it's, it's worse. worse. I can't. I people can't are addicted take them. to. There's more people addicted to pharmacy to medicine, but that's what they want. want. That's exactly. That's what yeah. big pharma is all about. That's why ivermectin is not. That's why we got the COVID. It's I like had a 48 vaccine. We had a guy gave us a stizzy, and that's my, It's like a, a vape pen. Well, New Year's Eve rolls around, and my wife gets obliterated. I'll show you that video later. So it's just Blake and you I. You should share it with everybody. <laughs> it's just Blake and I. We're hanging out, and we're drinking, and like Blake's like, I got that stizzy out in my Is pickup. this our buddy from Michigan that gave it to you? Doesn't matter who it is. That's what I figured it was. I'm not going to name names, Jeff. Well, I'm not, not a name. I asked his state. That's not who I am. I'm not naming names. I'm, he's, he's anonymous. Okay. Great guy. Change the name to protect the innocent. Yeah, helps yeah. my backpack. He'll, he'll text me later when after, yeah. he, and he'll say, "Yep, that was me." So, we're we're drinking. Blake's like, "I got that stizzy out my pickup." It's called a stizzy. Stizzy offered me a million dollars. I wouldn't know that, would you? And uh, so we go. I, I've already put my wife to bed. She's two bottles of tequila later, and Ugh. yeah, well, she was drunk. Yeah, drunk. Andy, don't act like he's husband of the year. I had to put her in bed. 
Yes. And I, I was having her, fun New Year's fucking New Year's Eve. I don't want to babysit. <laughs> I put her I put her in Payne's bed. Payne's home for Christmas. And I put him in her bed. He comes in and goes, where's Jessie? I said, she's in your room. What'd you put her on my room bed for? She's going to throw up in my bed. I got all my stuff's in there. <laughs> so we're sitting. Jessie's asleep. And Blake's like, I got that stizzy on the pickup. Oh, fuck it. Let's. So we go outside and both take a hit. And then I take another. He takes another. So we're two hits in and. We go back inside, and we bring the stizzy with us because we don't want to walk out in the cold. Ah. We're watching the TV, and I'm like, ah, not really feeling much. So fucking take another. He takes another, and we're watching the show a little bit more. And fuck it. I take another, and I start coughing, gagging. I just cannot get it up, and I'm coughing. So I'm four hits into this stizzy. Fuck. So I go and get a bottle of water, and I sit back down and start watching this show. And I become emotionally invested in this goddamn <laughs> TV show. It's like it's like a uh, it's a it's a competition. Up. I am like it's it's a it's a physical competition, and like people get it's like Survivor kind of. And I'm like, God damn, come on, you gotta do you, this. You just don't vote them off. Like so, I'm fucking. I'm like just glued to the TV. Like what the fuck? Like, and I realize this, and I'm like, okay, this is enough. And I go to bed and I lay down, and my wife is she's drunk on alcohol, and I'm laying there fucking high as a kite and i close my eyes and you know how you like you get those spots in your uh-huh. eyes and i start the colors start talking to me <laughs> fucking orange is saying something yellow is saying something green is saying something else i'm like oh god damn that must be some good four, shit four hits is way too many from whatever stizzy that is and for the world and for the record the grandkids were at our house <laughs> yeah yeah that's why that's why listen it was a responsible night grandkid the, my kids were away good answer Jesse, Jesse's two bottles of tequila in. Like she's gonna get over her shit on 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 her. Reese, own where's my mom? I said uh, sleepy. He's, I'm sure he's diving <laughs> off the balcony. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, we, they were perfectly safe. <laughs> no marijuana was involved in that story, but it uh, did. Like four hits, and I was. I, I told Blake, I'm the like, funniest I, I gotta go to bed. I, I, we, we, I was playing church league softball. Right, we're over at softball complex. We get done. I had a buddy on the team. He's he said, hey, man, I'll catch your ride. Some old lady's gone. I said, yeah, I'm fine. So we're here. I'm taking him across town. Over. He lived over in my old town. And uh, he goes, you mind if I smoke? Said, no, I don't give a shit. I oh, thought, God. I, I thought he was talking about a cigarette. cigarette. And, uh, shit, he breaks out a doobie. This is a church league, right? I said, yeah. <laughs> no. I said, hell, I thought she was talking about a Marlboro. He goes, no, oh, does he mind? Hey, I said, no, I don't give a shit. But it just kind of caught me off guard. So he starts hitting. I'm at a Marlboro. <laughs> he, he, he starts taking a hit on you. You want to hit him? Yeah, it's been a shit. I ain't spoken to me in 15 years. Yeah, give me a hit off that. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> I took one hit, and I took a hit, two hit. You know, I got a 15, 20-minute drive home. Well, I leave Old Town by Old Town where after I dropped him, and by the time I got to Lakeside City, it hit me. That's a long drive to Archer the City, old, too. The old chat, <laughs> it damn sure is when you're going 35. Because <laughs> <laughs> about that time, I don't, there's a song that come on the radio, and it was the worst possible song. That he goes, get your freak on, get your freak on, get your, get your, get your, get your freak on. And it seemed like it played <laughs> yeah. the whole, and I'm going, and I'm paranoid as fuck. I'm going about 35 <laughs> mile an hour. People pass me, and that song's going, get your freak on. I said, I got my fucking freak on, leave me alone, God damn it, I'm not working on it. And I guarantee you, I come in that house, go, what is wrong with your eyes? I go bed. I go bed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Church, leave, leave the church league something. I box. saw a here's meme the, today that the said video. the problem with the world right now is we're not. We, men quit smoking Marlboro Reds and started strawberry shoot the strawberry that, cheesecake vaping. That is the truth. Oh, so yeah, this is New Year's Eve. This is before the stizzy. My waddle, My wife has two bottles of tequila in, and she just she makes a fool of herself New Year's Eve. I and can't believe you're showing this video. This is great. I had to carry her ass in. There's my buddy Blake. Just he's got my wife's shoes in his in his hand. <laughs> and he's just look at that big ass fucking smile on his face. Who's that in your yard still? Fox. Okay. He just got this big old shit eating grin. He's just holding her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> because Christmas Eve, he was the one that was like that. Oh yeah. He looks like that Sasquatch I called in. Yeah. <laughs> I 
there. I like, always flop Kelly over my shoulder. Well, I tried to. Yeah. I tried to. I opened the back door, tried to flop her over my shoulder, and she, like, fucking fights me. So that's how we ended up baby oh. cradling. Because I, I had her over here kind of half ass. Yeah. And then she, like, does this. Blake's going out to talk shit. But probably going to get the stizzy. But <laughs> she passed out in my yard, uh, in my backyard. And Payne's like, "Where's Jesse at?" He goes, uh, "She's back." Or he asked him, "I said, he goes, uh, oh, she's over here, passed out in the yard." And we got her inside. Uh, boy, there ain't nothing worse than that feeling. That's like that last time I got drunk, yeah, bad drunk. That's been about several years ago. We we had motive. Me and, me and a bunch of my buddies, Mitch included one of them, we had mo No, he wasn't there that night. Well, there was a different. But anyway, we took couples. We're taking our wives to the Legion Hall. And we all had motive. We're going to get them drunk. And we, each one of us is going to wind up getting laid out of this deal. We get them drunk. Well, it backfired on us because we get up there. We start ordering drinks. Well, they won't drink. So, well, you, we, come on, drink a, come on, drink a shot. And I, I never had a fireball in my life. Ooh. And they said, yeah, drink this. And I, so fine, I'll drink the motherfucker, and I drank it, and I drank Kelly's too. I thought, man, that was pretty good. That was, that was awesome. I said, hell, let's have another one of them. We bring it over, and I drink it. Come on, y'all drink one. Just drink one. They won't drink one shot, one beer, nothing. They had it packed also, probably. Bitches. They're fucking <laughs> whores. I was goddamn mad. Because it, well, because now I'm mad. I said, well, fuck it, I'll just drink them. So I drink, and I You're not getting laid anyways. Might as well get real drunk. And I was pretty good until I had to go piss. And I got up, and somebody stole my motherfucking leg. <laughs> oh, God damn. And I grabbed the wall, and I barely slid in there, and I took a piss. I like, hey, Kelly, uh, we, we got to go home. I don't feel good. <laughs> and so we go to leave, and she's got me uh, standing me up. No, Bill Brown walks in the door, and he goes, God damn, what happened to you, sir? <laughs> I, I had nine fireballs. He goes, let's make it ten. I said, no, I had to go to bed. I got to go to bed. So I fucking, I go to the house. All right, well, you could, I get out. And Kelly parks by the curb right there in front of this one. I live in town. She parked by the curb. And I get out. Of course, I immediately fall backwards into the car. <laughs> Are you all right? Do I need to help? Uh, no. Just let me fuck alone. I, I'm all right. I'm in. Okay, I'm fucking fine. <laughs> so she goes She goes into the house. Well, you can track me. I, it, it, it didn't take a bloodhound to track me because there's a tree in my front yard, and I made it to that tree, and that's where I left my hat <laughs> and a pile of pink puke. <laughs> all right. Well, then I made it over to the back behind my truck, and I left my boots and my socks and another pile of puke. And then I made it to the back gate and left my shirt and a pile of puke at that gate. Oh, that's a miserable night. And then I got to the back where the trampoline was, and I had that trampoline, and I woke up that morning, I was butt naked <laughs> on that fucking trampoline. You remember the American werewolf in London when he wakes up yes. naked in the zoo? That's what I felt like. My neighbor's <laughs> over there going, put some clothes on, there's kids around here. I got them, and it's raining. I grab my nutsack, and I jump off fucking trampoline, <laughs> run into the goddamn house, and you, and you can track me in there because there's... All the way around that damn trampoline was a pile of puke. I must have been leaning puke, <laughs> walk a little, lean puke, all the way around it. But, you had, have you had fireball since then? Fuck no. That's some nasty I ain't shit. Had no, I don't know if I've had any whiskey since then. I'm not I'm not a big drinker, period, and uh, I don't even like Clay, beer. these stories you've told tonight, and you're not a drinker. No. Can you I, imagine if you were a drinker? I am not a drinker. The only reason I drank is to get drunk. If it wasn't for beer, I'd have never got laid. Because <laughs> believe, believe it or not, I used to be very shy. But beer, beer helped you. Beer brought me out. I can remember. I can remember the first time. I think I was like 16 years old. We were over there by the flea market, and uh, <laughs> in Holiday Creek, Cherry. Yeah, over there with a uh, fucking Speedway or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, they broke out a, a cherry vodka. Oh, that stuff's nasty. Do they even sell that anymore? I have no idea, but I hope not. Because I started drinking it. Well, there was a little old gal there. And I loved her. I thought she was hot. All of a sudden, she starts getting in an argument with this guy. And this guy called her. What's her name? I have no idea. I don't even remember. It was so God. But I remember I loved her. Melissa. Me yep, Melissa Schmidt. And uh, I loved her. And... Uh, so anyway, well, this guy calls her fucking cunt. Uh oh, there you baby. go. There's your there's your opening. Boo! 
Yeah, of course, I got about a half pint of fucking cherry vodka in it, so I've got that. I weigh 145 pounds at this time. I beat this motherfucker like a redhead stepchild. And, all the way, and then another guy jumps in. I wind up beating his ass, and that's the last thing I remember. All right? Until daylight. All right, this is at, you know, over by the uh, flea market, right? I wake up in the back seat of a car at Lake Buffalo in between Electra and Iowa Park and some fat girls, and it's right at dawn, <laughs> some fat girls got me by the hair and she goes, he'd be kind of cute if he didn't have all that puke all over him. <laughs> I had puked all that goddamn cherry vodka. I had cherry vodka. Did you go home puke. with the big girl? Uh, no. I, this wasn't I, another troll story then. I, I, I got out of the pickup and I walked. It wasn't like, actually, it wasn't like Buffalo, it was Middle Lake, which is in between. And I walked five miles back into town. I was fucked up. Yeah, he'd be kind of cute if he didn't have all that puke on him. Big old fat 12 sandwich eating motherfucker. <laughs> but I don't have a clue how I got there or what. But it brought me that old, that old alcohol. I thought, well, shit, the, you know, it wasn't the next So week. you didn't win Melissa Schmidt over this? No, hell no. She Fuck no, she didn't have no part of it. She, she did. She was a little, uh, she a little proved for Clay Reed. It's kind of like the time you remember when the uh, uh, Beach Boys was here. Yeah, God, that's a long time ago. Yeah, over at JC Park. Yeah, this gal, this oh girl, God. she's a doctor now. She wanted to go out with Clay Reed, and I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't have. I was basically homeless. We lived in an apartment over there, no electricity, no running water. Couldn't pay her bills, you know, over there in the holiday. She wanted to go out. She thought I was cute. She wanted to go out with Clay Reed. Oh, bad. So we, we, she gonna take me out. Well, she's rich. She's driving a convertible Mercedes and, and. I got, know who this girl is. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, she's a doctor now, and uh, so she. Uh, she gonna take me out. Wanna well, take me out? Paid for the tickets. Got the tickets. She'd had to, cause fuck, I didn't have nothing. Well, we go and we get over there at that fucking concert, and I get drunk. I get drunk. Of course, I see all my buddies, and there we're drinking beer. And she had money, so she was buying beer. Bad thing, Beth. Bad thing. She screwed well, her chances up, didn't she? Well, she. Hindsight, it did her a fucking favor because she, <laughs> she got to see the true Clay Reed because I got drunk as shit and I had Reebok tennis shoes on, high top Reebok tennis shoes on, stripped all my clothes off, stole a towel from somebody, I had no clothes on, cowboy hat, a pair of Reebok tennis shoes and a towel, had that fucking towel remnant and I had a, a, a girl, some other girl I picked up in a bikini on my shoulders right down there in front of the stage. And Aruba, Jamaica, ooh, you know, playing the whole time. Well, I get her off, and I got to go get me another beer, and I go, to go get another beer, and there's this old guy. I won't mention his name, but uh, he's a big football mean son of a bitch from Iowa Park. You know, he's about three four years older than me, and I always thought he was badass. I, I, he's kind of one of my heroes. And I was like, hey, man, I called him by name. And, of course, you know, I, I look like a, probably a fucking dumbass. He, he, and he, I think, thinking about it, he probably called me a dummy. Whatever he said, it fucking pissed me off. And I go to whooping his fucking ass. Well, then one of his other buddies, tough son of a bitch, he jumps in, kicks me in the head. I wind up whooping his ass. Well, right off the bat, I lose my towel. So I, I ain't got nothing on but fucking right, Reebok tennis shoes. Nobody wants right to fight a naked there, man. Fuck right there. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't even know I was naked. And uh, I kind of remember this. Yeah, See, and I mean, I'll, I'll be there. But well, then all of a sudden, somebody picks me up, you know, and I'm kicking and fighting, probably like Jesse. You know, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, and somebody's got me around the waist. It was fucking Tim King, which is Tim. Hell, he's a goddamn Cotton County Sheriff now. <laughs> Big old tough son of a bitch. He grabbed me. He said, God damn it, Reed, we got to go. The cops are on the way. Saved my life. He fucking took me out there, took me in there, throw me in her goddamn Mercedes. She's taking me home. What was funny is the guy that I whooped, they finally got me be, uh, calmed down in the car, take him home. Tim said, see, and all of a sudden that cop car goes by, and the guy I whooped is in cuffed in the back seat. Go, That's the motherfucker right there. That's the mother. Right there. <laughs> I went home, and I th oh, she took me back to Holiday, and I throwed up all over that goddamn Mercedes, and I've never seen her again.
ever. So how many people did you whoop when you were naked? Two. Two? Yeah. yeah. I'm, Nobody I'm, wants to fight I'm, a naked man. I'm hoping man. that's the most ass that you've whipped while naked. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> I, I would have to say that was probably it. But I, yeah, it's hard to make anybody believe that I was shy until I got on alcohol. Do you remember the old boy named Bobby Johnson that used to hang out at the bars all the time? Oh, hell yeah. Whatever happened to him? Boy, I don't know. You know, him and uh, Barnyard Kennard were kind of on the same line. Is Barnyard still alive? Yeah. He's married to a buddy of mine's, was married to a buddy of mine's sister at one time. Yeah. Barnyard yeah. was the nicest guy in the world, too. I always liked him. Oh, yeah. I got along. I mean, I don't know why anybody wouldn't like but him. But he was a fucking. I, he, he took me for $20 one night at that same party down there at a. No, it was a different one. It was a different. But the same. By Dog place, Patch? Same. Yeah, over there by the flea market. Same, same house. But a couple years later, yeah, he come in there and he's sitting there. And this might have been one of the first times I've ever met him. And he's fucked drunk. You know how he dog. He was always drunk. Oh, yeah. He come up there and he says, he goes, hey, I'll bet you $20 I got your name tattooed on my ass. And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, I'll bet you $20 I got your name tattooed. I said, I got Let's bet. He pulls it down. He's got the words, your, your name. name, tattooed on his ass. And what's fucked up about that is I told my son about that when he was little. And guess what? He's got that motherfucker tattooed on his ass. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Your name. <laughs> but uh, Barnyard, I think, got a DWI that light in a, a, a 4440 tractor. He was pulling a plow down Scott Street, <laughs> dragging it <laughs> down with it down. He, uh, <laughs> his dad was a doctor, yep. prominent doctor in town. Delivered the boy, the boy that's got the, that copy of the your name on his ass. Uh -huh. Barnyard's dad delivered him. <laughs> yeah, he was a uh, tattooed he, up. I always liked the guy. Oh, I yeah. always did too. He was yeah. one of the nicest guys in the world. But that he was my first real indicator. I'm trying to think of the word like that. The first person I really knew when I was a freshman in high school. Yeah, that was a professional drunk. <laughs> I mean, he had a brand new pickup and he'd have a sofa and a keg of beer in the back of it, and you'd see him driving everywhere. I mean, just like it was no big deal. I know it. I never, I, and I was like, God Almighty, that kid. But he had a lot of money to burn, you got and he had a lot of fun. Did you ever know Frankie Goff? Yeah, I liked Frankie uh -huh. too. Frankie died yeah, a long time ago. It. Yeah, they, Dog Patch Boys. I really liked yeah. them, which I went to elementary with all the Dog Patch Boys. Yeah. So there was a bunch of them Dog Patch Boys. They always tried to whoop my ass back in the day. I, I had a lot of run here. There was some tough some bitches over in there. Tommy and Roger. Tommy and Rogers, I never had run great with guys. Them. Yeah, great, great guys. guys. Them, they were good guys, but they, you know, had some of them other ones. You know, like I, I don't even remember that one guy. I don't know that one guy's name, but we'd gotten a fight with one of them at Red River Rodeo. That's this weekend too. Yeah, and I whooped shit out of one. Another guy jumps in and wind up whooping two of them, and my buddy Sean whooped another one. Well, then, all right, that's at Red River Rodeo. Well, then Pioneer Reunion which is several months down the road, we're over there and we're sitting on the tailgate one night and I had a separated shoulder. I had my damn, uh, I working in oil field. I had a separated shoulder, so I had a sling, had it, you know, uh, strapped to my chest so I couldn't move it. And I, I said, Sean, go get me a damn beer. Over and he go, walks over and grabs us a beer. Cut, well, he comes back and he is beat all to fuck. Nose is god dang broke, blood all over. And I go, what the fuck the hell? They jumped him over there when he was getting that beer. Dog Patch Boy. I wonder who they were. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you one of them. I just know, I don't know what his name is, but I know his nickname. What is it? Uh, Mud Duck. And I, I cause I met, I, he come on, I said, who, who the fuck, what happened to you? He, they fucking jumped him. I said, who was it? He said, Dog Patch Boy. Said, was it Chris Turner? Hey, is that his nickname? No. No, I went to elementary. With These all them guys, guys, I did not know, and I know a bunch of you know like Chris Wells, Dewey Wells, Tim Pat, and all them. I knew all them guys, but these guys were not them, and they weren't in really in that bunch that I would really consider dog pass too. True boy. Anyway, fucking I. So I go in there, and motherfuckers ain't get my. I, I go in there to the dance looking for them, and finally O'Shawn said, "Yep, that's him right over there." Like three or four of them over there. I walked over in a month and I said. Are you Mud Duck? He goes, yeah, you Clay Reed? He goes, yep. He says, well, I hear you're pretty tough. And I said, believe every fucking word of it. He said, well, you get your he your shoulder healed up. We'll see who top dog is. I said, don't make shit. I'm fixing to knock your ass out. And he goes, ha, ha, ha. That's the fucking worst thing. <laughs> I went, beep, put him to sleep. And I turned and boop, put that guy to sleep. And then everybody went to fight. I wonder who Mud Duck is. That's crazy. 
Yeah, I bet we find out now that I said that on deal. Somebody Who was one of the Sanders boys? Uh, I don't know. I didn't never recognized, never seen before, never seen him since. But he was friends with the guys that we whooped at the Red River Rodeo a couple months before. Yeah. It was a whole different kid group of kids growing up there. Them kids grew up tough. Oh yeah, it's a whole different world growing yeah, up. Dog right. patch. Yeah, you just bunch, fucking between the bunches and Roger and fucking Tom and Kate, all them just bad motherfucking people. Took the, took the took the opportunity when he laughed and kind of settled <laughs> yeah, back. He, yeah, I guess he, he had out. that false sense. He didn't think there's no way <laughs> in hell this guy with his one hand's gonna try to do something right here. Blink. I we, mean, it was one of them. <laughs> and what was funny is uh uh we were all of course everybody law immediately got in there and, and uh i played the old, oh, boy. <laughs> and he's like we got a man with a broke arm we got a man with. so they started the cops are helping me up with mud ducks girlfriends going no he started it he started boy and i checked out out there and this mud duck is gonna wear me out i go out there and i get in a fucking tree crawl up in the tree to hide <laughs> from the law because they're all looking for me and then all of a sudden here comes lance and sean and they come drive by and i <laughs> give the old high sign <laughs> we all laugh i'm gonna message roger and ask him who it is yeah who? he would know roger poland mud yeah, duck is i'm gonna ask him who the hell mud duck is does it matter that much right now? It just it's uh, when it's you get bothered. older, it bothers yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Old Mud Duck. I never knew his name, but all I knew it was Mud Duck, and they were dog packers. That's what they said. But but yeah, the old matter of fact, I think that's the fucking last time I've ever been to Clay County Pioneer reunion. Do you did you used to do the uh, ranch rodeos? Yep. And, and the last ranch rodeo I was at was uh, at Pioneer Reunion. It wasn't Pioneer Reunion. It was a ranch rodeo they had over there. Yeah, because I, I, they asked me to get in this son of a bitch with my buddy. I said, I'll get in it, but I'm not getting in the bronc ride. My bronc ride days are over. So you wouldn't do it for $1,000? I'd do it. Oh, yeah, I'd do it right now. Today? Matter of fact, I've been thinking about doing it. So yeah. if we did, so you'd do a fundraiser for charity, and you'd go do that again? Ride. Bronx. Ranch bronc ride? Yeah. yeah. And bull riding? Uh, I probably would. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't bother me. <laughs> it don't take much to get show pony out. Fuck no. Yeah, yeah, Your actually, wife would not be I've, very proud of you oh, if you yeah. did that. I've actually been thinking about it, but I've, but I've also been thinking about uh, how bad my back was fucked up at one time to where I couldn't even walk. And I go, you dumb son of a bitch. Keep, keep to the coyote hunting. Keep to the coyote <laughs> well, hunting. Did you go to, you went to the Western Heritage because Zach said he talked to you there in yeah, Abilene. I went, yeah, I went there. But you didn't want to ride nothing or do that. You just went as a spectator. No, no, that's. Did you feel good when you left no, there? No, that's that. That's team ranches. You know, you got to be with the ranch. But did you feel good when you left there? I didn't go to the rodeo. I know, but you you still left there happy, feeling good, right? Yeah. The walk, there's a good fresh. point. There's a good. That's my point. Yeah. You don't oh, have yeah. to go there to. Oh wear yeah. A, wear a, a tag on your back street, back of your back. Today, Clay does not like crowds. I went down there on a purpose. I had to pick up a buckle and all that, da, da, da. And, I, and, you know, I got these two guys on my shoulder, the good guy and the bad guy. Bad guy says, hey, let's go get fucked up and let's have some fun. It's fucking Ranch Rodeo. All you buddies are down here. And then this other son of a bitch said, fuck that shit. We grow down that shit. I want to go to bed. We got to fucking kill a cow here in a little while. God damn it. Yeah. Gotta keep so, our street going. And, and like I say, and, and it doesn't matter. It's kind of like I told Bobby Posky one day, uh, you know, we are talking about going to bar. I said, Bobby, guys like me and you ain't got any business going around drunks. That's because we don't have the temperament to put up with it. And uh, and the bad thing is, is we're good at knocking people out. And now, you know, when we were 150 pounds, eh, we knock people out. But, but nowadays, we pack more pool shit behind our shit. And... I know guys that went to the pen, knock a guy out, and he falls down, hits the head, and he's fucking whole life run over a bar. So I, I have learned not to put myself in those situations. And any time there's a crowd, there's going to be that guy that going to mouth off or say something, and I don't have the resolve to say, Clay, just the bad guy over here. <laughs> Is ways more than this little son of a bitch over here. <laughs> 2022 is not 1985 anymore. Either. Exactly. And that kid dead. Yep. Kid. Well, I had my buddy over at Holiday, Texas get killed the other day. I saw that, Gary. Yeah, oh, Gary. Good motherfucker. And he was defending a gal, you know, that was getting her ass beat over there, going to help her out. Boom. Dead did, that did quick. Did you know the old boy that shot him? 
No. I saw he was at Archer City, though. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know him. Name ring barrel, face look from everybody. I didn't know him. But so he just went to defend this girl? Yeah, yeah. He, he shot him? getting beat out in the front yard. Yeah, and uh, he shot him right in the face. That's the thing. thing. Like, you all, you see those things. Um, I was looking at Twitter just the other day, and they were, lady got mugged on a subway, and people yeah. were just watching. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, like. And filming it. And I'm like, well, I, I couldn't do it. I'd have to say to try to help. But, I, if, but I, if I've got I'm if, Gary, I'm, if yeah, I've got I'm my done. wife and kids, and I'm seeing that, like, am I going to risk getting a bullet in between my eyes? Yeah, yeah. It's they say that's the deal. I'm not that guy. Yeah. I'm always going to step in, so I can't. I can't put myself in those places that that shit's going to happen. Right. I got to stay away from that stuff. See, I'm that way. I can't. I can't. I just cannot I could not, be a not, spectator to something exactly. like that. There's no and way. That, and yeah. I might get killed that way. That I could, mean, it could happen, but yeah. I, I just I don't have the. But that's that's one of the problems in our country is is that stuff didn't happen all the time back then because, because somebody was going to step in and knock the fuck right. out of somebody. Oh yeah. And people didn't have a gun with them all the time. Uh, I mean, very seldom do I remember ever going somewhere that someone had a gun with us. Do uh, you remember uh, that much? No, no. I mean, no. you didn't think about it. And there's a reason I didn't carry a gun. That's another thing. Everybody says, well, why don't you carry a pistol? I said, I do in that picket, but I don't carry one on my deal because I don't have the temperament to yeah. do it because I, right. I, I, I get mad. And, but back in the day, you didn't think about a pistol no more. No, there was yeah. people had fights on Kemp Street all the time. Every Friday and Saturday Some, night. Was a every sh- one of my best friends, we fucking, that's how I usually, Barry Ragsdale, me and him beat each other's head up there that one day. And then fuck the next Monday we're working together right. for the next year. And but, best bud. But nobody ever pulled a gun or nothing. That's what I'm saying. No. Today, every time there's a street fight, a fucking sixteen year old kid killed him, a fifteen year old kid in Wichita yesterday I saw. Yep. They've had what, five murders in Wichita five, Falls yeah. in the last week. I yeah, mean, that's it's more just, than they've had in the last yeah. five years and, combined. And they want to blame it on it's not a gun problem, it's a people problem. Yeah. Exactly. People today are different than that. It's like kids today. Kids today, it's parents that have ruined the kids. <laughs> yeah. Kids are raised the same. Yeah, exactly. That's I mean, kids are raised different. You raise a kid the same way you did in 1970, he's going to turn out the same way. But you don't. Yeah, that's what them old guys that they were talking about, generation. Yeah, I got to answer. You're to blame. You're to blame. Your generation raised our generation. So, yeah, y'all, y'all got to shoulder some of the blame there, cowboy. Kids don't know anything. Yeah. Kids, they're, they're all a product of what, what they taught. were raised in. That's yeah. exactly right. And that's what's bad is, you know, we get our rural kids, which for the most part. Better than city kids. Better better than city kids. But then they got to acclimate themselves mm-hmm. to the city kids. And it's a lot of times they don't gee high because they're naive to what goes on over there in the city. It's a totally different game. Like it shooting you, yesterday. Your opinion on this. My opinion is this, and, and as, as I've gotten older, I've thought about this more. When I was 20 to 24 years old and go to Cheyenne Cattle Company, in mid-August, all the freshmen would come into town. All those new girls coming in, never been to a bar before. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That's when you take this little toothpick over there and you see it leaned up. How you doing? Yeah. That's right. That's that's exactly right. (laughs) Yeah. But at that time, the girls that would come in that were country girls actually weren't near as naive Right. As the city girls they were, they picked up on bullshit. They quicker. had they had, they were around it all the time because they were around older guys and stuff. Right. Those girls in the city had been <coughs> raised in a different environment. Nowadays, the city girls are exposed to a whole lot more shit than the country girls are. I think. Well, now on the other end of that deal is some of the country girls had been drinking out of the bottle <laughs> since they were that <laughs> tall, so they were a little. They were, they, back then, they were Wise, they, yeah. they were wiser to shit yeah. than the city girls. Yeah. You get a girl from South Lake Carroll, she'd never been exposed oh, to yeah. anything. Yeah. You take a girl from Archer City, well, shit, she'd been around shit all of her time. Yeah. <coughs> Nowadays, the kid from Archer City is not near as experienced as the kid from South Lake Carroll is. True story. Yeah. And the kid from South for, from Archer City is a worker and discipline. You're gonna find it's hard for us to find hands out here that are high school kids. Oh. Now you got the parents all the time. I could put on Facebook and say, you know what? I need I need a couple of high school kids that want to work. Oh, Junior wants to do this. Junior don't want to do shit. Junior wants to get paid. Junior wants to stay on his phone all the time. It's hard to find kids to work. Well, I agree and I disagree. Can you yeah. find as many as you found 15 years ago, though? You could, if you go look for them. <coughs> but, I mean, kids want to work because, like I say, but nowadays, 
a lot of guys won't work with some bitches because well i can't work them you know my insurance aren't the ranch right. doesn't cover it you know they're worried about being so they all everybody's got an excuse like a certain rancher there in town you know he's he's bitching about the hey, these kids got done but don't work i said he was talking about these three kids and i said them fucking three kids worked their goddamn ass off for me i said yeah i had to go get them i had to tell them what to do and all that but they did every fucking thing I did. How many of them, though, could work? Because 20 years ago, you could find 20 kids that wanted to work. Yeah. Nowadays, it's, what, three, and you have to go to track them down? When me and Tony first got in business out here, it was 30 years ago. <clears throat> and I would have, you hired one high school kid, you'd have 10 others calling you wanting a job. Yeah. All the time. So it, didn't, it wasn't no problem for us. If a kid didn't work out and we got rid of him or fired him, <clears throat> excuse me, he was gone and someone else would come in. Nowadays, you can't find. Yeah. You just, that, that want to work. Now, there are a few that still will. You yeah. know, there's some really good kids. Uh, um, Terry Utley's son would make a great great hand for somebody out here. He, but Terry makes him work and help and do stuff. He's raised pigs. Those kids are, that they're raised around that kind of stuff. Country kids are more at guns. Country kids know all about guns. Yeah. You know, it's it, girls and boys. Yeah. It's just a crazy world we live in. It's so different between living here. Oh, without a doubt. That's, that's damn sure true. Is Archer City growing or dying? Dying. Knox City is too. Yeah. Well, like I say, uh, you know, you know, used to we were a bedroom community of Wichita Falls. Well, now it costs too much to drive back and forth. You can't, you can't do that. You know, you know, because Which we we don't have. Well, I tell you what. I said, you 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 want me to tell you how you make Knox City grow? He said, you have got to get rid of teachers. Y'all probably, I guarantee it, y'all school, y'all probably got. Andy's a, on oh, school board. You, y'all probably got, y'all probably got teachers that have been there for years and years and years. All right, y'all's biggest, and and our. Oh, and I know what you're about, saying. There, all their kids are raised. Well, yeah, all their kids are raised. Right. Well, they're living in houses that somebody else knew could be. All right, so. You, you, your biggest employer in this county is probably that school. School or the hospital. School yeah, the school hospital. or the hospital. <laughs> all right, so you got all. But I, I was telling one of our school board guys here a couple of years ago about that. We have got teachers that are up there at Older and Hill going to be there for it. And well, they all live in these houses. Right. They're going to be there. So we don't have no place to put. We got people wanting to move to Archer City and left and right. I mean, but can't do it because there ain't no houses. And so all them, t you know, uh, hell, we used to be a pretty good size two A or three A. Which would be a three A now, you know, yes. Three A, and but, but if you you wind up cutting that fat, bring in new 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 meat with young children, well, the next thing you know, we'll knock cities on the rise, and that's why you gotta. We are at a. That's a interesting way to look at it. My brother-in-law's got a sign, Knox City Population sign, and I think it was from 1980. It said 1,550 people. Saw it just the other day. Right now, I think I had to sign a census 11. report as mayor, so it'd have been in 2010. I think we had 1,060 people, maybe. And I don't know where them fuckers all come from. I'll bet now our population is somewhere around 850, maybe. Yeah. No, we're over that. You think it's so? 1,200, 1,293. That was, in not, that was in 2010. I don't think they've put the new one up from 20 yet. Okay. But but regardless of what it is, we don't have that many people here. And course, out now, now you know a lot of your farm deals. Are, yeah, have went let's say under. it's a thousand people. Yeah, that live cotton, here. Uh, yeah. watermelon deal. Yeah. Ain't out here. Yeah, yeah. We got, let's say we got a thousand people though. Yeah. The problem is, I don't know how where the hell we to put five hundred other people because well, there's no housing for it's, nobody it, exactly. because all a bunch of the old houses people lived in <laughs> have been burned up or boarded uh -huh. down or bulldozed yeah. over. But here here's <clears> what I say to that: How many of those houses? Back then, were a house of four, mom, dad, and two kids. Exactly. And now just yeah. a house of two. That's what he's yeah, saying. All the teachers right. are older. Yeah, because their right. their kids are gone and they're not coming back and right. moving to Knox City. We we went to a, a, they ain't got they can't even if they want to. We went yeah. to Pee Wee Track Meet the other day. Reese's Pee Wee Track Meet. There's a lot of parents or grandparents of kids. Me and me and Michelle are having some of the same grandparents that were parents with when we were parents with our kids raising up. Yeah. And now it's their grandkids. But when you look in the stands and stuff, it's a whole different group of people in Knox City compared to what we used to have. Yeah. We used to have a bunch, like you said, teachers. Well, you got two teachers and they got four, three kids or two kids. That's a nice, respectable family. We don't have very many of them anymore. No. We don't have a guy that's the 
you know, a doctor with a family. We don't have an attorney in family. Or no, we don't have a lot of bi- – all the businesses that are out here, the guys are my age or older, and they've raised their kids and yeah. stuff, and yeah. they're retired. We don't have the young nucleus. So I didn't realize y'all were having the same problem in Archer City, too. Yeah. And those people, they don't want – Archer City, I would think those people – especially if their kids don't give here. I'm going to stay in Knox City. My business is here. My grandkids are in the area. So this is where I'm going to stay at. But if I lived in Archer City or if I lived in Knox City and my kids moved to Dallas or Houston or wherever with my grandkids and you could sell your house (coughs) and cash in pretty good and buy a house somewhere else, that's what I would do. There's people buying houses here right now that are in California and stuff because that's what they're doing out there. They're selling a house for a million dollars, buying a house here for hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They got eight hundred thousand dollars to play buy on. A house in Arch City if you want to because there's nothing available. But if you had enough money, yeah. you could. But yeah, it's going to be big money. Holiday Texas over there, they're probably fixing to go to five A. You know, because all the Wichita Falls kids are leaving because yeah, the school they're, system's they're so fucked up. They well, they're Holiday has been able to manipulate the transfer they've always had a lot of transfers over there everybody lives in wichita goes to holiday good school all right well now uh over there on 1954 they don't know they're gonna be like 80 homes in that one but place don't even look the same as it did 15 years ago holiday does no the 1954 don't yeah no yeah because they're building them house 80 the 80 houses on that one plot and then another place is they're going to put 44 houses on there. So you're talking about 120 new family. Say they got one kid. That's 120 new kids. Yeah. So, but, but they're, they're, and they're, and they're all within the district. So they can't do the transfer. I dated a girl that lived right outside of Holiday in 1985. And so I would drive that way down 1954, yep. Lakeside City to 1954. And I'd go by there. And there was, 12 houses on 1954 three of them were firemen yeah and and you know right down there you go by there now and there's 100 houses it is a neighborhood from holiday all the way around all around lake lakeside, wichita now. lakeside <laughs> all the way to holiday and that yeah. build big ass fire department they built at lakeside uh-huh. city too i couldn't believe how big that's grown there yeah it's, and I, I guess lex graham's gonna have the last big ranch over there oh he, I bet you, he ain't lived over there in years lex don't live in there no more uh-uh, no he lives over there south of winthorpe yeah, oh, he up, lives. They moved to the father-in-law's house. Yeah, didn't they? yeah, the old Hastings place. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's lived there. Lex and my dad were good friends. Lex, a really neat guy. Oh goddamn, me and him, he was my biggest fan. When back when I was fighting tough man contests and boxing, he'd all him and Dick Gaines and Jim Lee and all them. They'd come watch me fight. They were, and then I'd go out there and watch them. Uh, every time there was a Tyson fight or something over there, man, I they were a lot of fun to watch. Listen to them old fuckers. Matter of fact, he called me here all oh, last year. He said, hey, Reed, da, da, da. He said, I need one of them damn varmint calls. You give me a varmint call? I said, I will get you a varmint call. <laughs> I said, what the hell? Well, him and Kathy, they said, his wife, they sit on the back porch and they put that varmint call out there. Sometimes they'll put a pig squall and shoot hogs. Sometimes they'll put the cow call and shoot cow right off the back porch and have them He's a wine. super nice guy. Him and my dad were great, great, great friends for years. Have you ever been hit with a liver shot? I've seen them on. Uh, you ain't shit. And it just fu- it shuts the whole body down. Yeah. Well. I, not really a liver, a kidney shot. Kidney, but yeah, the liver, I know what you're talking about, but kidney's bad enough. I mean, it'll sh- fucking... Shock wave down yeah, your back? Yeah, you know, it'll knock you out. <laughs> I mean, it is bad. That's some gun. Uh, yeah, we, were, we were doing it just sparring one time over there, and our coach hit me, god dang. Oh, my. <laughs> I mean, it was... That, if I, if I would have had to been able to step stand up, there would have been no way. No shot in hell. I remember one time I watched a fight a pro fight and it was the most lopsided fucking fight is white boy and a black boy and this and the black boy is the champion i mean he's like champ and it was kind of like apollo and uh rocky except Ro- this rocky had no talent <laughs> and that oh now so he is this is the most lopsided i mean i feel bad for joe bob joe bob da 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 and i mean the fight's almost over and then all of a sudden Old Joe Bob, he digs deep in there, and he hits that guy with a kidney shot. Fight was over. <laughs> he was the fucking champion. Yeah, I mean, he, the points were like 8,000 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was – and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's something else. Just but the yeah, whole body down. I mean, it will hurt you bad. But when you're in a street fight, do you ever go for the body? Or do you ju- – you're just pounding the head or whatever you Yeah, do. I just – 
it all depends. I mean, ever, but like I say, once I started getting a little size to me, I didn't have to wrestle much because they <laughs> usually knocked their ass out. And that was, that was, and, and of course, after I learned how to box, I learned how to punch. I guarantee you. I'd, once I started getting up there about that 180 pound, 180 pounds, I knock them out pretty good. But, but no. Were, were you surprised when you started gaining weight on how much extra punching power you had? You, like yeah, you were hitting I guys. I, like, I oh, did not shit. even give a fuck back in them days. You know, of course, you, you know I say that 180 pounds. I didn't. I when I was 20, I didn't get to 180 until I was at. Uh, 28 years old, I fought in a tough man contest in Lawton, Oklahoma. I weighed 183. Mm -hmm. That was the funniest shit ever. I go up there. I'm I'm broke. I'm making a thousand dollars a month working this Parky Ranch, right? And I I get over there and uh, I see where they got a tough man contest at Great Plains Coliseum. Hadn't heard that name in a long time. Lawton, Oklahoma. And I go, <laughs> shit. And it paid a thousand dollars to win the heavyweight, seven fifty for the middleweight, and five hundred for the lightweight. So, uh, heavyweight was uh, two two twenty five and above, and then like middleweight was two twenty five to one eighty or something like that. <clears throat> so I go over and I said, "Fuck that!" I said, "I'll go over. And I'll get in the heavyweight. And I'll whoop him big, fat, slow motherfucker <laughs> ass." All right. So I drive up there and, it, and old Lex Graham. He went and watched this. Matter of fact, so I get up there at this deal and I go to sign up. And, I go to sign up, and I said, Clay Reed, Mankins, Texas. And the old boy, when I put down Mankins, you from Mankins? I said, yes, sir. He goes, well, hell, my family's from Mankins. Keith said, Lavender? Keith Lavender. <laughs> I knew it had to be. <laughs> I said, and he, he told me his name. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you old Sonny Lavender. And he goes, yeah. Jason was uh, the re he was refereeing <laughs> one of the fights. My, he refereed my fight. And so, anyway, we get up there, and he goes, all right, man, I'm going to, and he goes, I see you're signed up for the heavyweight. I said, yeah. I said, I need 1000 I don't need 750 <laughs> And he goes, all right. He, goes, he wrote me down. Well, I walk back out there to go to the car, and I'm going across the parking lot. I look up, and there's this old guy named Ivan. I think his name's Ivan. But I, I, he, Ivan is like 6'9" fucking arms like this got a few pro, pro fights under him i knew him from when we boxed years before when we were young i mean got arms this guy a little reach arms. on you not just a little bit <laughs> his arms were longer than i was tall and like i say he could box he was tough and uh and six nine and uh i was like oh fuck and I said, 750 hey, I, sounds better i said hey I mean, what's <laughs> up and he goes hey reed you fighting i said yeah he was you did the heavyweight? I said, I ain't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I went in and I said, put me in the middleweight. Yeah. And it, it, it gets funnier. So we get up there with Ivan. The only reason probably kept him from going pro was he was a drunk. Turned into drunk. Well, he fights that first fight. And the first fight he got to draw, there was two twins. We got to what we call the bull ring over there where every, all the fight guys that are fixing the fight, they all over there warming up. Well, there's these in bleachers, you know, and you sit over there. Well, there's these two twins from Lawton, Oklahoma, Indian boys, you know, and they're about 19 years old, right out of high school, soft, soft. Big guys, probably been bullies their whole goddamn life. And I knew they were in trouble because they were in Ivan's division. Anyway, I asked that one old kid, I said, uh, Ella, what are y'all getting in this for? He said, shit, it's Friday night. We might as well whoop somebody's ass. You pay for it. Ah, they high five us. All right. <laughs> well, the first brother, he winds up drawing Ivan. Well, Ivan, he's sitting over in the corner. Hell, I'm pretty sure that some bitch was smoking a cigarette. And uh, they said, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Lawton, Oklahoma, Geronimo Deerwater. So, you know, one of them Indian names. They're both Indian kids. And he's like, ah, and he's a hometown boy. And everybody's, yeah, kick his ass, kick his ass. Kick his ass, sea bass, kick his ass. <laughs> And well, oh, oh, Ivan, he ain't got his goddamn arms off the turnbuckle. You know, he's still sitting over. And from Wichita Falls, we got Ivan. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. But, well, anyway, they fucking rung that bell. And that Indian boy run over there to Ivan. Ivan never even got out of his goddamn corner. Had some bitch run as fast as he's going to do it. He's going to give him one of them haymakers, you know. 
Ivan looked like you'd shot that son of a bitch with a goddamn buffalo gun. Ivan throwed the overhand right one. Boom! Hit old big boy on the butt, and his fingers and toes curled up. And he went, <laughs> one punch, five <laughs> silver. He, well, this is where it got good because Ivan didn't know it, but Coors Light was sponsoring the Tough Man oh, contest. Shit. So anytime you knocked anybody out, you got a case of beer. Well, Ivan, being the alcoholic that <laughs> he was, his eyes lit up when the ring girl come out there with it. So I knew everybody was going to die at this fucking uh, deal, and I had to wait to be. <laughs> and so the next, the next Speaking night, my language. the other damn brother has got to fight him. Well, he ain't dancing. He don't want to fight. He's, <laughs> he's, he's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And Ivan, he's over there like a fucking uh, <laughs> uh, a show horse and a, guy, uh, a race horse, ready to go. Somebody ring this motherfucking bell. Because I fixing to kill somebody. <laughs> and so they run, they rung that fucking bell. And old Ivan run over because he's going to get a damn case of beer. <laughs> he runs over to that motherfucker. When he did, that son of a bitch run. I mean, that big fat Indian boy. <laughs> Looked like he was running, literally running for his life. Running around that goddamn ground. And oh, and oh I was going, come here, motherfucker. I'm going to get my goddamn knockout, boy. <laughs> and finally, the Indian boy, he runs over there, gets in the corner, puts his head down. He goes, and he's trying to say, I give. I give. I give. And he goes, oh, I said, not till you not. go to sleep, you ain't. He puts his left hand on the back end of that head. And he goes, boo, boo, boo. Uh, where's my case of beer? Where's my goddamn case of beer? He knocked every motherfucker out in the heavyweight division. Yeah, I got his cases of beer. You should have never told him that. Oh, I got that guy. How did you fare that night? Well, I made it to the uh, knocked the Mexican guy out, knocked the white guy out, and then I had to fight a black guy on uh, Saturday night. And I was I had a pretty good fight for a while, and then I finally got in the second round. I, I knocked him through the ring. I hit him with a good right, and he went through the ring, and shit, we're fighting. You know, I'm thinking brawl. So I come out of the ring, and we're I'm whooping his ass on the judge's table. Oh, they threw you out for that shit. Well, no. What worse is I went to swing, and I turned, and I hit that fucking turnbuckle. Oh. And fucking hyper extended my right hand. And that third round, uh, I couldn't even, couldn't even pick up my – I couldn't use my right hand. He wound up winning the decision. Little did I know – did he do to me a considerable favor? Because, all right, so we, we fought. And we, it was a hell of a fight. Man, he went toe-to-toe, and we fucking gave it all we could. And, but you get a 15-minute break, and then you got to fight again. Well, you got to fight a kid named Rodney McSwain. Rodney is just under the heavyweight deal. He weighed like 124 and three quarters. <laughs> and I mean built like a goddamn cobra, you know, 20 years old. Fucking red-headed, goddamn Irish. I mean, just look at him and tell you he's a mean son of a bitch. And, uh, well, he he never got past the first 20 seconds of any fight he had. He killed everybody. So the black boy, after going toe-to-toe with me, had to go over there and fight Rodney McSwain on 15-minute break. I'm still back there laying on the concrete, <laughs> cold concrete to get cooled down when I hear him get, get killed out there. <laughs> uh, and they said, oh, ah, oh. And I said, how's he doing? Oh, he's asleep. <laughs> McSwain kid win it all? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Was That's he a Wichita Falls or a Lawton kid? No, no, he's a Lawton. Actually, I think he was from, uh, if I remember correctly, from Mustang, Oklahoma. He won it three years in a row. Well, that was the third year in a row. Yeah, for Somebody real. asked, did you get chased by the skunk? I feel like I remember that story. Get chased by the skunk? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, it says, you get sprayed was by Clay skunk? the one that got chased by the skunk? Didn't you get... I don't remember that. I thought you got drunk one night. And he did do that. Woke up and a skunk. No, but I, I thought it was when you were puking around the trampoline. No, it wasn't me. Maybe it wasn't you. He's the one that went home with the girl in the Cadillac that looked like a troll. No, that, yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's your chance to be a millionaire. I know. It. Fuck that deal up. God damn, but she, she she was professional. I saw somebody in the she Riviera had, the other day, and I thought about that story. Yeah, I had that open that Riviera, that truck. I said, I would offer you a beer, but... We don't even have electricity, so it would be hot. We had candles in that trailer house. 
Oh, yeah. She was a professional. I opened the trunk of that son of a bitch. She had a cooler full of Bud Light, cooler full of Coors Light, and a glove box full of marijuana. So, so whatever pleasure we like, she was going to get laid that night. Damn, that bitch was ugly. Whoa. What's the deal with your pickup? You got a you got an air conditioner in the back of your pickup. That's for his bed. You got damn right. I, I understand. I will I, you know, all them homeless days in my lifetime, yeah. I had to sleep a lot, sweating. All right. I done made a vow. As long as I can pay the fucking light bill, <laughs> we ain't fucking sweating. Balls ain't sweating when I sleep. So and you're you're touring the you're touring everything, and that's the back of your bag. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've only had to use it one time, and that was up there in Bags, Wyoming. I was up there coyote hunting. It was like 94 degrees during the day, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, I had to use it up there. I and walked out there to piss, and I was like, "What is he going to do?" It will on freeze there? your ass off. Is it nice yeah, back well, there? Yeah, I pulled up here at the damn. Oh, what's y'all's little convenience store up All there? All soups or Penmans? Penmans. Penmans, I think. Yeah, Penmans. Yeah, everybody's taking pictures of the. <laughs> did, you, did you see the Hat Creek Cattle Company sign on the side of it? No, I, I just saw well, the air you know, and Lonesome Dove there. when they on the side of their wagon they had Hat Creek Cattle Company. You know, we don't rent pigs. Uva, Uva, you had the Latin written on it and all that. Well, when I built that old box, uh, I knew I had to have that sign on the side. So I had a guy build it for me for 100 bucks. So it says Hat Creek Cattle Company. You know, well, every time last year went on that, when I went on that big trip, 4,000 miles, every time I pulled it up to a gas station, somebody would say, is that your ranch? And I was like, no, it's a lonesome. <laughs> that's a lonesome dove. You know, it's not. Uh, you have to give dissertation about the whole deal. Finally, I done made up my mind. Next time somebody asked me, and I got up to uh, Wells, Nevada, across from Donna's Whorehouse, and uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> Donna's Whorehouse. Yeah. Yeah, they're not very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't even know. You have that. to see something like I that. I didn't to even it. know they had whorehouses up there, but I, I got online. They got a Facebook page. You can go you on and check yeah, it. Yeah, you need to pull up Donna's whorehouse. But it, and but anyway, so I look. So so anyway, I'm at this whorehouse. Uh, no, I'm at a truck stop. That's across from it. <laughs> and uh, this guy, he tells me he just sold everything he had, moving from Pensacola, Florida, to Wells, Nevada. La la la. And I said, oh, that's a cool deal. Well, then all of a sudden, right before I was done. They accept my, credit cards. Yo, yeah. He goes, is that your ranch? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, it is. I said, I started out, me and my buddy started out down there on the Rio Grande years ago, but it got so goddamn hot down there. We decided to move all of our cows and stuff and start ranching up in Montana. Moved all our shit up there. Shortly after we got up there, though, the poor soul got a bad leg wound infection and <laughs> got gangrene and died. He died but, on us. But before he died, he made me promise him that I would take him down there to Waco and, and uh, bury him along the Brass River. And he goes, are you shitting me? I said, well, fuck yeah, I'm shitting you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it could be a movie, dog. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Donna, no. Now, that Daryl's uh, right there don't look so Donald's. bad, Clay. No, that ain't. Go to girls right there You remember the, the one-armed bandit? Well, yes. Nevada. The one-armed bandit, that's just about yep. the way Donna's. No, see where it says girls down below, right to your you left. You will never left. see that at Donna's. Andy, go up. Go up. Maya, blowjobs, full sex, hand jobs, threesome. She's good for anything. Go, Girlfriend go, experience. Go up. Go to the left right there. It says girls. You can click on the girls there and see what we got. Oh, never mind. I guess that was a girl. Yeah, I'll bet you ain't never going to see them. Chelsea. That's on the Facebook? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's on her. Click on Chelsea. See if it shows Donna's Ranch she sec, like. dot sex. If it's dot sex, it's it's good stuff. I'm Threesomes, I guess that you well, can take your friend with you. What was funny is I got out there, and the first time I went out there in the Nevada. She has nice, nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> if that's that's <laughs> your business. She's and a spectacular <laughs> personality. That bitch is ugly. That's what that's, that's saying your, right there. That's your calling you. card. <laughs> that is a bad deal. Oh, what kind of prostitute do you sleep with? I she got nice really hair. nice, nice hair and a good and personality. She was super nice. And from Texas. <laughs> and from she was from Texas. Nice. And she's wore the fuck out. She's very professional. Been in the business a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that bitch is ugly. <laughs> that might be the one arm man. Uh, oh, look help? at this. Can you help me? This is our second try to three. Some first one was bogus. Both of us excited and willing. Your thoughts. Oh my goodness. <laughs> good good toe good toe sucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, oh my God. God is whorehouse. Getting a free plug from us. Send us some shirts. Good toe sucker. Oh, my God. The best is the nice, nice hair. If that's the only thing you can come up with about someone, what's your girlfriend look like? She's got really nice, nice hair. And oh, she's, she's ugly. She's real, She's got a great personality. Red flag. Red flag. Yeah, you're like, that bitch is ugly as sin. Mike yeah, and Gloria, yeah. the fucking second try to threesome. They, they lied to us. Oh, poor Mike and Gloria. <laughs> yeah, we come through there, you know, in between <laughs> Vegas and uh, you get out there, and there's 189 miles out in the middle of the desert. Oh, you, the skunk you, story. I know what it is now. They want me to tell. Go ahead. And then you run into a deal. I'd been up all night. I'd been driving like 16 hours straight. So I, there, and I'm getting in the middle of fucking nowhere, and there's a deal called Area 51 Alien Quick Stop. So I pull in a convenience store, and I pull in there to sleep in the back of my truck. I sleep in there an hour or two, and this is on 2 a.m. on like a Tuesday night. And I mean, this guy, and I'm 189 miles from anything. Yeah, I forgot the name of that little town. And That's a happening like, little place. This ain't a town. This is 100, this oh. is 80, this is the only thing oh, okay. anywhere. And I go, I was like, God damn, this is a popular motherfucking spot at goddamn 2 a.m. on a Tuesday night. Well, anyway, I get up, and I leave, and I go over there and get gas, and I leave. I get going down the road, and I put on Facebook. I take a picture. I said, yeah, I got me a little gas at Area 51, Alien Quick Stop. Well, a buddy of mine, John, he goes, yeah, what was you doing at the Quick Stop? I said, uh, getting gas, getting taking a nap. Yeah, I bet you was. It's a whorehouse, too. I said, what the fuck are you talking about here? That's a fucking whorehouse. I said, no, it's a goddamn convenience store. He goes, yeah, but you know them little pink rooms to the right of it? I said, yeah. He goes, those are fucking rooms. And I said, no wonder that some bitch was a happening spot. He goes, fuck yeah. And I said, I said, you ever been there? He said, fuck, I used to work in a ranch right across the street from us. I was in that motherfucker twice a week. I said, well, Spend all my money there. I said, what do they charge over there? And he goes, $300 an hour. And I said, well, what the fuck you do for the other 55 minutes? A <laughs> guy was, my buddy almost said his name. My buddy calls me one night. I'm, I'm 21, 20 years old. Calls me and says his car wouldn't start, and asked me to come down and pick him up at the Eagle Mart on over by uh, the, the Walmart on Southwest Parkway, right there by the apartments. I can't remember the name. Of the yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You know where the Walmart is on uh, by Sutherland's? Yeah. And yeah. there's a, there used to be an Eagle Mart right there. Yeah, where yeah, McDonald's yeah. Is. Okay, right. So I said, okay, I'll come pick you up. First, I tell him, I said, listen, this is it's two in the morning. I left the bar at 12:30. Had to be at work. Worked at Huff Furniture. Had to be at work. You know, eight o'clock in the morning. And I told him, I said, if, see if someone's got some jumper cables there. If not, in 10 minutes, call me. So he calls me back like 15 minutes later. Uh, nobody else has got jumper cables at their house. I'm like, fucking just ask somebody coming in there if they got some jumper cables. I said, if somebody don't come up there with jumper cables, <coughs> I'll come get your ass. Okay. 15 minutes later, he calls me. He's like, hey, nobody else has come by here. Well, shit, no, now it's almost 3 in the morning. I said, all right, I'll be up there. So I get my truck, and I drive over there, and I don't see the son of a bitch's car anywhere. I'm thinking, that little fucker is lying to me. I'm going to be madder than hell. So he comes walking outside. I'm like, where's your car at? Oh, it's just drive down here. Professional drives the name of that road. So I drive down. I said, okay. So I take off driving. You know, there wasn't nothing else back there. There wasn't a Walmart. And I drive down there and I drive. And he said, turn right here. And I turn right here. And he said, turn left here. And I turn left. I'm like, now we're across Highway 79 back behind uh, the bar, the old cowboy bar there, whatever, race religious place. Yeah. Texas Texas Nightlife. Nightlife. Go back by the cemetery and we're going on down a little bit. I'm like, God dang. He said, Yeah, this is where I got that skunk chased me and I stopped and had to throw up. I'm like, what? I go, Where is your car at? He goes, I took that little Mexican girl home from the bar and I remember her. I said, Not really. I said, Well, where's she at? Oh, she's in my car. I go, What? We drive all the way. You remember where Tony Gibbs got murdered and they threw that body yeah, by the deal? Uh-huh. That's where we're at over by the old bait stop. That's where he's at now. So I pulled up there and I go, Where's that where where's she at? Windows are rolled down the car. This is December. It's about seventeen freaking degrees. Windows are fogged up and stuff. He goes, well, When I left, she was asleep in the front seat. I was like, What? So I go over to it and I open the door and this chick is buck naked laying on the front laying in the front seat. And I go, Hey, hey, and she goes, Mike, turn the TV off. Mike, turn the TV off. I don't know who Mike is, but he probably is not real happy if he knew where you were at either. So she's colder and shit. I mean, nipples are about that freaking big. I said, do you want to get in my truck? She goes, yeah. So she goes and gets in my truck. No clothes on, just goes and gets in my truck. So I tell my buddy, I said, do you want me to, um, I said, I said, pull around. I'll pull around in front of you, pop your hood, and I'll get my jumper cables out of the back. He said, why don't you just, can you push my car and start it? I was like, yeah. I, I said, I don't want you bitching if my truck's going to be a little higher than your bumper on your car. Oh, it won't problem, blah, blah, blah. 
I get behind that son of a bitch and I park that car and I go, vroom, vroom, I push it in him. Vroom, 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 vroom. Meep, meep. He waves, see you later. Vroom. And he took off and I had to take that bitch home. <laughs> she lived on by the base, buck naked, four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, who do you live with? Uh, my parents. My parents. I go, uh, it's like an animal house. How old are you? Yeah. I go, yeah, she's about 18. I go, well, do you have a key? Because I know you don't have one on you there, I don't think. She goes, oh, there's one under the pot on the front steps. I said, okay. I said, when do your parents get up? My dad goes to the base. He gets he has to leave for work at 4.30. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm like, shit, well, I wouldn't get pulled over here. I mean, I just left my ass there. <laughs> you thought know, it was funny as shit. <laughs> that brings up a sorry moment, one of the sorrier moments in my life. But not as sorry as my brother. One night we went out to Stetson's, and you know where that Finkler house is there out there at um, Lakeside City, the old farmhouse? Oh, yes, yes. We used to live in that. Me and Darcy Muncy and old Shelly Kerr. <laughs> Darcy Muncy. Yeah. And <laughs> she Shelly, grew up down the street from us when yeah. she was, like, little. Shelly Kerr, we all lived down there. And, uh, well, we went to the bar one night, and, uh, well, immediately I get in a fight, and I get kicked out. And so I had to walk back to the fucking deal. So I walked from Stanson's, which is, oh, shit, you know, what, four or five miles. I walked back to deal, and I go there and there and go to sleep. Well, then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I'm in there butt-ass naked. Somebody comes in there and slaps me on the ass. And so a buddy of mine, and uh, Mike, we'll just say, he slaps me on the ass. Of course, I'm asleep, and I wake up, motherfucker. And, you know, kind of scared me. And he goes, hey, we're getting a piece of ass in here. You want some? And I said, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Of course, I hope I'm saying one of the girls' names said, we just mentioned. I said, get out of here. Get out of here. And so I go to sleep, and I said, wait a second. Hey, what did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I get up, and sure enough, we run a gang bang, or, uh, gang bang on this old gal. This old gal, Lance and, uh, Lance and uh, Mike are in there, and they're having, well, so well, anyway, old Mike, he, he's mounting there, so I slap him on the ass. I said, go to the head, go to the head. So he goes to the head and gets both of them. I pull in out, mount her from that boy, and I have my way with her, bust my nut, and I go back in there and go to sleep, and I don't think nothing else of it. I forgot all about this shit. Well, I go back in there, sleep, next morning I wake up, and, uh, Fucking uh, Mike has already got up and left. He was the smart one. <laughs> Mike doesn't left. Well, I get up and I go in there and I'm fixing to leave, go to work. Miss Gal is sitting there in the kitchen table. Hi, a good looking little son of a bitch. I don't know if, you know if she ever saw my face. I said, How are you doing? She goes, Oh, I'm good. She's a little sore. Can, can I get a ride home? Can you be right home? I said, Yeah, I probably can't. Where you live at? Uh, Bowie. Well, uh, my brother be up here in a minute. <laughs> he, he'll give you a ride. I said, I, I got to go to work. I may work at six. Da, da, da. Okay. Da, da. So I leave. Mike had already done the same routine, so I got it. Well, then Lance gets up. Of course, Lance, he has no scruples. He don't give a fuck. <laughs> so he goes, she goes, hey, can you give me a ride? You damn right. Hell, Joe, to pick up. Come on, I'll give you a ride. Oh, yeah. That's when he walked, worked down there for Wichita Medical, and he said, where do you live at? Boot? He goes, oh, yeah, hell yeah, I'll give you a ride. I got to go down there and get gas. So he said, I got to get gas. So he pulled down there at 7-Eleven on Southwest Parkway and Kemp right there, get gas. So she says, I got to go use the phone. And she goes, all right, I'm going to go out pump the gas. He pumped that gas. <laughs> Left that bitch sitting there at the fucking 7-Eleven. <laughs> You didn't do that, did you? you <laughs> fuck yeah, I wouldn't think a bitch goddamn goddamn. Booey's a long ass way. way. That motherfucker give all three of us a piece of ass. You goddamn. <laughs> he goes, well, you didn't fucking take her. <laughs> oh, well, shit, I don't got the money for the game. Yeah. I don't think my pick up and make it to good. <laughs> yeah. She gave all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Poor gal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. that was back when we could get pussy on accident. <laughs> on <laughs> accident. I guarantee you. I, I remember one time me and O'Shawn lived together. We're sitting out there on the back back of my old brown hornet pickup. We're just sitting there smoking. This is in Arch City. You know, opportunity ain't in I mean, unless right. you want the buffalo herd, you know, you can get them all day. <laughs> the nine one one car. Yeah, the nine one one girls, you can call that at any time. But opportunity, you know, for good-looking gals, I'm sitting on the back of the deal one day, and all of a sudden I said, Sean, look at that. Come walking down the hill, coming right to us is this pretty little old red-headed gal. 
Never seen her before in my life. And I said, more drink beer. And I said, how you doing? You know, Mr. Congenial, I'll strike up a conversation. Hell, yeah, come over here. Out of your shell now. Yes, yes. Sit, sit over here with me. She, she sits and I die. She goes, I'm trying to walk. Said, I've been staying with my grandmother. I got a bad back. And I said, well, it's a little known fact that I have healing hands. I said, I can fix that back of yours. I throw the old line of shit to her. She says, I said, but there's only one condition. She goes, oh, yeah, what's that? So you got to be naked. Hook, line, and sinker. Okay, whatever it takes to fix my back. Mm. So I take her into Sean's bed. He's got a water bed. <laughs> have my way with her. But I'm not stingy. I'm going to share with my buddy. So <laughs> I, I grab a towel. I said, I'll be right back. I get finished with her. And uh, I said, I'll be right back. So I run out there to go get my buddy Sean. I said, Sean, Sean. I'm running around the house with my goddamn, you know, outside with a towel on. Sean, Sean. Motherfucker ain't nowhere to be found. Finally, hell, he come pull him up. He'd left when got some goddamn snuff. And I said, what the fuck you doing, man? I said, goddamn, I had, you, had that bitch ready for you to go. I was going to share with you. Share what? I got some pussy in there. He goes, you did not. <laughs> I said, goddamn, sure, you're lying to me. I said, well, I'll tell you what, sunshine. Go in there and check that little spot in the middle of your sheet and your bed and tell me I'm a lying. You fucked her in my goddamn bed. That's so much matter to goddamn warrant. And about that time, she got dressed and walked out the damn house. Was her back better, though? That's what everybody wants to know. Ah, uh, she walked real good. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> Your spirit fingers. Yeah, that part lesbian comes in handy. But that's what I'm saying. You get pussy on accident back in them days. Now you can't. No. You got to yeah. work for it. You got to go in there. Come on, honey. Please. You got to beg for it. Yeah. Yeah, please. Hey, I'm, I'm lucky on that part, man. I'm Kelly, she has never turned me down. Yeah. She's a whore just like me. <laughs> well, that's why we stay together for 30 minutes. She left. Do you want to talk about the additions in the family or not? The what? Additions? Her fake titties? There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got How did that work? How was the consultation? Did you get embarrassed any on that? Uh, I was not there. I went. Mine I, was embarrassing. Yeah, I didn't. No. I, li I like how I got them. I was sitting at RT's America. Of course, Kelly's wanted them for goddamn forever. And I'm like, you don't need no damn hell. That's a bit super fine anyway. I said, you don't need no goddamn titties. And uh, well, anyway, I was sitting at RT's one day eating, and old Jerry Griffin comes in there, and he goes, probably shouldn't have used his first real name there, but anyway. <laughs> he's live. He, he, <laughs> yeah, he come in there, and he goes, and, and he goes, look at that. And I go, holy shit. Who's that? He goes, that's my old lady. I said, I said those are fucking awesome. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I just got them. I said, those are awesome. I said, you just cost me a lot of money. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, I just happened to get a goddamn uh, shipping bonus. And, uh, and, uh, and he said, uh, and it was Valentine's Day. And he said, I'm fixing to get some for Kelly. Because that's what my sister does for a living. Lacey, she puts him. Like then. So I called old Kelly. The stripper. I said, Kelly. That's no, a different sister. I had forgotten what the motherfuckers were supposed to look like. Those were awesome. I mean, they were <laughs> fucking. So I called old Kelly. I said, Happy Valentine's Day. She said, What do you mean? So I got you a present. She goes, What? I said, I knew boobies. Don't you be kidding me like that. Don't you be kidding me like that. I said, nope. I said, Jerry showed me his old lady's titties, and they were awesome. And I said, we're going to get some. Oh, Jerry's yeah. going to be real proud of yeah. you in this country. I don't know, <laughs> and, uh, and neither does he. And neither does she. I don't think he, all she cared about is she got big old beautiful titties. And uh, so anyway, she goes down there to my sister. But I didn't, well, I didn't see. But you know what's the worst thing about that damn thing is, is the goddamn five and a half weeks before she, she could get them unveiled mm -hmm. and i was like motherfucker like a little kid at christmas wasn't it yeah i was like come on man come on man just show me come on not yeah, that, anything like say she got i that was just like last week before i finally got the test drive <laughs> <laughs> yeah do the old motorboat on them something <laughs> so, yeah it's, <laughs> bing, pop them burgers out <gasps> <sighs> <laughs> I'm in love. I love you. <laughs> yeah. There's a. She's super fine to start with. She's really fine ass now. <laughs> There's somebody that we know, and his wife had the breast breast augmentation done, and for the for the post op picture, she wore a special necklace so that they'd be able to identify her. In the uh, the plastic surgeon has a website, it has all of his work. 
and uh, she wore a special necklace. That way they'd be able to identify who she was. Well, <laughs> so word got that, out that, yeah, that she the wore the special necklace. necklace, and everybody was looking at this <laughs> this well, old see, boy's titties. I'm trying to get a picture of the son of bitches. Kelly won't put let me put my phone anywhere around. <laughs> because, you know, that I, phone I, does I, not I, go I'm up. Get rich off of. Uh, all my money. Come on, man. I just want to see you. I, I don't give a shit. I said, but I may have to choke her to get a photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she's So you not, didn't go to the consultation and that stuff? No. It's the most she, embarrassing she, thing I've ever went She did it all, 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 on Zoom. Oh, really? Really? Mm -hmm. Well, they've changed it from... We did it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. You sit there and watch well, them measure them. You did it COVID. It was so fucking embarrassing. Though. That was the most embarrassing thing I've ever been through in my life. Yeah. And every titty, every titty place is the same what way. What was embarrassing about it? You, it's just, it was Another embarrassing for me. playing with you. The old man's in there, they, they them and, and, they're, and, they're and they're measure, they measure them and shit. They're like, what do you think? You know, and they're picking them up, and you're like, God almighty, just get the damn things. I don't care what you get. Then they, you go size, and then the girl that comes out that does it all, every one of them fucking can't move their lips. They got so much Botox and shit in their lips. They're like, hey, you think I you know, and they're, they're it's, because we went to two different places before we got done. Both places the same. And Had then to the, play with mom's boobs. Oh, yeah. and then the Both places? Oh, yeah, both of them do. And then they take them, pick them up, and measure them. Oh, yeah, three kids. And it, it just, oh, shit, I was embarrassed as hell. And they're like, well, how big do you want them? I'm, this is, I, I was embarrassed. And I don't get embarrassed very much, but I was freaking embarrassed. <laughs> then you go into the lady that collects the money. Whoo. She's a 9.8 on a 10 scale of 10, every one of them, from the chin down. And she's like this perfect set, you know, and she's got the body on her and stuff. And I kind of look like this and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it just. Where'd you get yours done? Which she done them in Abilene. Abilene. At yeah. school, some image, sculptor's image or image sculptor. I don't remember that. But it, it was the most embarrassing. But first time we had a male guy. Then we went to Wichita and got a consultation. We went to Abilene and had a lady do it. And it, it, it was it was fine. It just was embarrassing to me. Ah, it was, I, And I don't get embarrassed very much. But I was. all these ladies are coming in. They're like, oh, your wife's so pretty. And, you know, yeah, yeah she's sitting there. When got, you know, three people got their hands on her titties. And stuff. <laughs> I always pictured if Michelle was getting a bunch of women playing their boobs, I would be like, oh, this is pretty cool. And it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah. I felt like I was at Donna's or whatever that place was yeah, called yeah. earlier. <laughs> she got nice pretty hair. hair. She got <laughs> nice, pretty hair. Nice, nice hair. Good toe sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Someone is going to message me that's been to Donna's. I'm telling you, wait, oh, you don't I, have to. I, I guarantee you I know a bunch of them from Seymour, <laughs> Seymour, Texas, probably been to Donna's. I didn't even know they had whorehouses at, at Wells, Nevada. And I'm sitting there pumping gas, and I look over there, and there's, there's, I think two or three of them. There's Donna's and then another one. Uh, but man, on that that highway that goes from uh, Fallon, Nevada to uh, Las Vegas. I can honestly tell you, Clay, I've never been on any of them places. Dude, I've been to uh, Vegas a bunch, but I've never been to Fallon. Road. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> think well, Michelle will really enjoy it. <laughs> there's a place called Hawthorne, and it is the world's biggest ammo. Uh, dump basically that's where all of our ammo is yeah it's weird you pull in there when you come in there you look over there and you i mean just thousands and thousands of concrete silos covered with sand and that's where all of that our you ammo can't is. probably see from air you can see on there i mean like thousands of them scattered across that desert i've and, never been from i've wanted to drive from vegas to Reno area and then cut across up there just because I've never seen it. I like to go places I've never That's seen. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, and if you do, you got to go. Uh, the Tonopah, New Mexico or Nevada, is the the Clown Hotel. I've seen I've seen it the is pictures a of it. Creepy pull that mother. The Clown right. Hotel. Yeah, every room's clown, different themed after a different but clown. The back backyard is a, a miners cemetery. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be haunted. Tonopah is is that up by Area 51? Yeah. What is yeah. the name? Ruby, is that the name of the town? If there's a place, there's a named after a lady up there where they've got the alien in, is that? Well, see, the area, area 51, that's why, that's right before you get to Tonopah is that Area 51 alien quick stop, the whorehouse. All the way down <laughs> through there, there's goddamn whorehouses. All the way. I mean, Aliens and whores is all you got. Yeah. World's famous the clown, clown motel. motel. America's scariest motel. Have you seen, so there's another place, I can't remember where it's at, but. They will pay you if you can make it all night there, and I think it's like ten grand. I ain't staying there then. But they'll beat the, no, like they beat the fuck out of you. They'll 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 put they'll drown you. 
No, I'm out. Oh, no shit. They don't even tell you. Totopaw is way the fuck up there. But every room is a clown room? Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole clown deal. Yeah, is he, see Let's if see it'll if say something about up. the cemetery and miners and uh, yeah. There's an old gold Let me go, do some research real quick. Gold mine. Yeah, matter of fact that one town up there is called uh gold something. There's a gold point, goldfield, goldfield Sc- Scottish up. Junction. Yeah. Tonopah. I, that's one place I've never Hawthorne. been to. Hawthorne. Hawthorne is where the uh, the ammo dump. And it's a weird fucking town. It's, I mean, it's kind of got a spook to it. You think there's some people disappeared out there in the desert? Oh, my God. I guarantee <laughs> you that goddamn desert is full of goddamn bodies. There's not a better, well, there's not a better, there's a bunch of them. But Las Vegas is a hell of a story. How they built that town oh, yeah. and how it came from nothing to what it is. I mean, you can look on Wikipedia and like it was a town of 10,000 people that is the most trashy yeah here it is Tonopal historic cemetery um let me see it's just a picture of it yeah mm-hmm. that's some of it so you think vegas is a trashy town oh my god i mean it is so you know you get off the strip or around the deals i mean all the houses i mean it is fucking scuzz just a buggy. desert that yeah. All of Nevada is. No, no I, I mean, yeah. I don't think Tahoe is beautiful, they say. Uh-huh. I wouldn't piss. I, give it, go to give Tahoe? it back to the fucking Indians. You wouldn't go back to like, I'd like to go see like Tahoe. It's beautiful. Yeah, up there at Reno. Yeah. That's a whole different, yeah. that's a whole different area. That, I mean, because they're right on the edge of them uh, forest. Uh, and I mean, it, it's cool. It's totally different. One of the shittiest, biggest shithole towns I've ever been to, not town, just been, is Kingman, Arizona. Yep. Pets are welcome at the Clown Motel. <laughs> but that's right. <laughs> take take a yeah, wally dog. Kingman, same goddamn way. Yeah, Kingman's a. Yeah, that's where a coyote hunted that Nevada State Championship. Seligman, Seligman was a cool little old town. It was funny as fuck. We stayed in that some bitch, but there's a, a cafe called Lulu's or Lulas, Lolos maybe, Lolos. I think it was. We walked in that damn bitch, shit, and the old gal said. I hope you are Trump supporters. If not, you're in the wrong place. And I said, well, it turns out yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, God bless we you, man. It. Take my money. Yeah, I said, take my money. Yeah, because that was right in the middle of COVID when we were doing that. Didn't have to wear nothing. But uh, it was funny is we we pulled down our course. We stayed at the Route 66 Hotel, which was fucking cool as shit. And it looks like a little old dive. And it didn't cost us, you know, like 80 bucks. But each room was immaculate. When you once you got past the outside shell and got it, I mean it was mac. But yeah, we stayed in the Ben Johnson. You know who Ben Johnson? Old, old actor. actor? Yeah. yeah, we stayed in the Ben Johnson room, was where he used to stay. And then they had each one. He was in Last Picture Show, wasn't he? Yeah, uh-huh. I was thinking. And uh, but yeah, he's from. Uh, I think he's from Paul Husco, Oklahoma. I'll be damned. Yeah, but anyway, it was a cool deal. But if we go down there to Family Dollar to get us a. a uh, something to eat. We park. We look over there, and there's a guy inside the door with his shirt off, and he's pinching on his nipples and pull, <laughs> pulling them out. And I said, "Well, there's something you don't see every day." <laughs> we walked in the door. It was the manager. He puts his red shirt back on and goes, <laughs> <laughs> "Nipples bothering you, buddy?" I went into the general store down there, and I said, uh, "Told that old gal." I said, uh, ma'am, is there a bar in this town? She said, well, uh, it there's, all depends on what you want. And uh, I said, well, I, I want to go to the one where I'm least likely to get my ass whooped. And she goes, well, you probably don't want to go to the Black Cat bar. <laughs> he said, they had a shooting there last week. And uh, I said, yep, probably don't want to. He goes, you want to go to the Roadkill. Roadkill's got a pretty little blonde down there. She kind of gets around. I said, yep, that's probably where we need to go. Real friendly. And uh, She gets around. Yeah. She's got nice, nice hair. Yeah, <laughs> nice hair. She's a good toe sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill and Gloria didn't have but, good but, with the threesome well, there. Funny, we I got up. a foot fetish. We don't so do I'm worth out. a shit at the coyote. Huh? So we're drowning our sorrels, and we go to the Black Cat bar because roadkill is already closed we get down there and there, uh, there's an old man and he was pretty excited he had a crochet crocheted cowboy hat and it was felt around here but then crocheted with yarn there there. are some weird fuckers I in mean, the world this, i'm telling well, you well this guy gets weirder because of course me i am talk to anybody so i start talking to him and and i said hey i'm saying so well, i'm 
Mac or some shit. He said, I used to be the number one methamphetamine dealer in <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. I said, really? I said, well, how in the hell did you wind up in Seligman? He goes, well, I lost three wives exactly 10 years apart. Okay. I said, exactly three years apart? And I said, did they have any help? <laughs> no, I swear to God, I had nothing to do with all three of them to the death. But after the last, the third one, I decided I might ought to get out of Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> I said, yeah, if lucky or you know, bad luck or whatever. So he gets up there, and, and uh, I, of course, I didn't ask him if he was number one methamphetamine dealer of Seligman. But about that time, this little girl in a camo shirt, she comes over. Well, she's camo. She's been hunting something, elk or whatever. She comes around the corner. She's got a little one-hitter. And he goes, thank you for the sample, sir. The <laughs> sample. All right. He goes, if you need any more, you come see. So I don't know about the methamphetamine, but at the very least, he was a pot peddler. And, uh, but he was, I was like, I wanted to ask him how the three wives I die. ask exactly. questions about that because I want to know. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I'm a question asker. Yeah. So the clown motel. Well, the the uh, the shooting the week before had something to do with me not asking. I can understand. Question. Yeah, I can yeah. understand because he's got a pistol. Everybody there's got pistols. I mean, I mean, on their side or it's just like goddamn gun smoke. And, the uh, the McCamey Manor, the world's most extreme haunted house. You get paid twenty thousand dollars to stay there for ten hours, but they're gonna. They're going to gag you, they're going to bind you, they're going to drug you, and they're going to beat you. Nope. They'll shave your head. you got to sign a fucking... There's a, there's a waiver, 40-page waiver that they verbally read to you to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Has anybody stayed there on that? No. Nobody's collected the money yet. And they've been in business for like 10, year, 10 years. Dude, I'm a, thinking right now, that's a pretty damn good gig. No, I'm no, not. No, no, no. I'm talking what? about to be doing that. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. I mean, if, yeah. You, if you can just torture a motherfucker and you're going to, you know, you how know, much does it cost to stay there? I, th I, I would have know. normally thought I could have done that, but I did. Uh, when my daughter got married, her husband asked me to build, uh, make a video, you know, like a spoof video. Uh, that song, Why You Got to Be So Rude. Why you got to be so rude? Yeah. You know, yeah, no. uh, so yeah. he, and basically the deal is we're filming his buddy who, who's good at that stuff. He, he set the, the deal up where he's asking me to win the marriage or the, her hand in marriage. And I keep telling him, no, 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 no. Why you got to be so rude? You know, well, one of the scenes in that deal, I had to go down in the cellar where he, he acts like he kidnapped me, has me in the cellar bound and gagged. Oh, well, I'm claustrophobic I, I, about shit like that. I've got, I'm not claustrophobic or anything or anything. Well, he's got my, he got duct tape around my deal, got duct tape around my wrist. And I was cool down the bottom of the cellar, and I said, all right. And then all of a sudden, they put that damn mm, tape on my on mouth. You. When they put that tape on my mouth, I don't know what it was. It was a. <laughs> I, I mean, I started, and James was going, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> and so, way we had to do it is we couldn't, as long as it wasn't on their track, I was fine. So, we just had to put it up on top of my lip. And act like it was on there. Bag of dog food is all it costs you. A bag of dog food? The person that runs it has five dogs, and all it costs is a bag of dog food. Couple ground rules: all it takes twenty-one years of twenty-one years, complete a physical, pass a background check, and be screened by Facebook, whatever that is. Be screened. There you uh, go. <clears throat> but I mean. Some people are saying like they buried them alive, gave them a straw to breathe out of for Fuck. hours on end. No. Twenty thousand dollars if you can make it ten hours. I don't play give Reed. Nope. Mm -mm. Give me twenty million. I ain't doing no this shit. shit. You don't think so? No. 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 Couldn't do this shit I'm either. Good. You're no a way. tough guy though, Clay. I'm not that tough. Not stupid though. <laughs> I I do have potential to yeah. be a pussy. You <laughs> imagine <laughs> bury me in a hole. I got, I got pussy tendencies <laughs> yeah. in there. Bury me with a hole and give me yeah, a straw, yeah, and yeah. that's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about you in Puerto Rico. What were we talking about on the beach about the switch fight? There was somebody on the beach or something, and Michelle said, uh-oh, this be a Clay Reed deal, and everybody can just pop out. Uh, somebody left somebody on the beach. 
or something. Do you remember that on the <laughs> boat? Clay Reed and moment. They're still there, and Michelle goes, "Oh, yeah, he'd be in our family." She goes, oh, "We could have a Clay Reed Thanksgiving with him and just pop out the switches." That would be Have you ran off anybody on that deal yet? With a switch fight? Any of your, any of your daughter's boyfriends? No, no, no. That I think my daughters were. They, 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 were warned smart, them. they were smart enough never to bring them to a family <laughs> function. It was individually, they can kind of get away with it. You get us all together, you get, it's a whole bunch of show ponies showing off. What about the son-in-laws now? Do they do they compete pretty well in the switch fights? No. They don't like that? No, they're not reeds. They allow <laughs> that they're not reeds. So yeah. they don't do it? Well, it's only got one. So, yeah, and he's what, what James. A, yeah, James, and he's James. not. Uh-uh. He nope. could go back to the Air Force and tell everybody, I'm flying a plane, and yeah. I get to ship me to me if they switch. Yeah. What, what's going on with uh, – uh, shit, I'll have a damn train of thought here for a minute. Bob, Joe, Tom. No. Uh, okay. I was going to ask you a damn point in question. I guess it wasn't very very important and something. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, your son that's on the fire department. Oh, Dawson? Dawson. Yeah, on the fire department. Does, does it, Dawson, there's no hazing or anything up there that's going to ever com- compete to what he grew up with. Probably not. Yeah, or being a Marine. He said it wasn't. A, of course, he's been on. He hurt his damn shoulder. He's been out for shit a month and a half. He, being uh, a fireman in Wichita Falls is nothing like it was when my dad was a fireman. Oh, when all, all the bullshit going on. Anything nowadays is totally different. You can't get away with shit anymore. Nothing's polit- Everything's so fucking politically uh, incorrect these days. Or politically correct. Hell, I think they wind up getting sued over there because. Ooh, there's a good question just came up here. What? Somebody that knows you well. Uh oh. Says, what about the Chip 2 story with Kelly Jean? Skip it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 I, I swear I, someone I, just I asked. Could, ragweed I could, I could ragweed have told the man story 09. You said to Kelly Jean. Now, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, I can't use the alias now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the story about the girl from Donna's in the, um, in Donna? the tooth. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to cut cover for you here. That's a great story. That's a great story. Uh, Your ass is going to get kicked. (laughs) (laughs) Ragweed Man 09 must know you. Ragweed 909. Man 09. You've told that story somewhere else. Oh, I've told that story a thousand other places. (laughs) And I didn't didn't change the name to protect the innocent. But when it's live, I get my ass kicked. (laughs) Damn it, I was doing pretty good till then. (laughs) She told me, don't say anything that will get us divorced. You know what? She's she's hot on the market now. New boobs. Opens up a lot more, you know. Yeah, dang right. I'm going to have to get me a lot more of that damn... uh, those, those uh, pain muscle metals. Yeah, yeah, muscle, muscle relaxers. relaxer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the thing is, guys, if we could get penis up implants at our age, we would. Absolutely. Yeah. I had that. <laughs> you can get those done. No. But yes, a girl can. can go in and get a perfect set of 36 double Ds. No problem at all. A man can't go back and get something that's going to, I mean. No, uh, I guarantee you, yeah, if, if there was a deal. Like that, we would be all over. Every oh, guy would have that fuck, shit. fuck, yeah. I goddamn be I'd be in the movies. I'd probably be divorced is <laughs> what I'd be. Yeah. A horse cock Johnson. It's like old, uh, it's like old uh, Larry the Cable Guy said that one time. He was uh, hiding out in the Victoria's Secret deal, and he heard the gal talking about getting a breast implant uh, reduction. And he said, boy, that's one thing you'll never hear a guy fucking say. Oh, my God, this dick is so big. Yeah. I have got to get it a little bit cut <laughs> off of this some bit. Yeah. Billionaire dies during penis enlargement surgery. If you had a billion dollars, why go. the hell would you even mess with it? Who cares? And he died? He died. Too many heart attacks while he's on the... When Diamond Trading Billionaire... Uh, you know, that guy's name. Damn it. Walked in... Oh, it was an anesthetic death. Yeah, it was an anesthetic but he's death. He's a billionaire. Why did you care? Why would you care? You know? But but still, I mean, if it was a, a yeah, if it was a simple solution, men would all. I mean, yeah. it would be a simple deal. They'll yeah. get there though. There's a guy on TikTok. He's the uh, the penis doctor. Huh? Yeah, I'll try to find him. But he's always talking about that's what they do now: penis enlargements. Well, yeah. looks like a little bit of work. Yeah, I'm good. Oh yeah, yeah that's what you say. A woman's deal's not that uncomplicated. How do you know? You're not my a wife's woman. had them. Was she not in pain? She didn't act like it was. They're tougher than we are. They, they also delivered babies. 
There's a lot of nerve endings on his dick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, mine are starting to flare up while I'm just talking about yeah. it. Going, eh. It's kind of like yeah. your fingernails. I mean, oh. No. Yeah, if they, if they can go through under my armpits and make my dick bigger, he'd be all for it shit, yeah. you know? Yeah. I don't is. think they make it longer. They make it girthier. Oh. That's what they do. You don't you don't get any extra inches. You get oh circumference. Well, according to TikTok, at my age, it don't really matter I, I, no more. I, I ain't got to worry about it too much. Yeah. But if I had one of them micro <laughs> penises, yeah. I would be. I guarantee you, what whatever it take. But yeah, I'm, bitch I'm, needs more than fucking six inches. I got then <laughs> she she don't need me anyway. <laughs> I ain't going that goddamn big. That's what we were talking about the other day. I said, I guarantee you, a man can tell you exactly how big around his dick is. Oh yeah, just by going. That big, because yep. <laughs> he's had that so much in his hand, so many guys. That's exactly time. right. He can go right there. Yeah, I know exactly. For years. Yeah, that's right. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. My kids are seven and three. You look they're, forward to what? Well, they're just the cute age right now. Just when they it. when they grow up a little uh, bit. That's and, the funniest fucking thing when you look back and go, hey. Where did this little guy come from? <laughs> this is awesome. Hey, Dad, look at here. I got a dick. Yeah. My, your, your youngest, he's already an exhibitionist. What do you mean? He don't ever want to wear no clothes. He don't oh, mind going right. around walking everywhere. Yeah, and he, yeah, yeah, and this is what's where me out. They call it a penis, which it's a penis. What are we supposed to call it? Cock, Cock or something. But penis just is not. And they say vagina. And that Dangling. wears me out. Yeah, I'm okay yeah, with Dangling. that. Dangling. Yeah. But little boys don't go TT. You yeah. don't say ask me if they need to go TT, and they don't say penis. Oh, something hit me on my penis. What are we it's, supposed to call it? I don't it? know. Man, if it's, I was there, I'd tell my son, hey, you come in, hey, my dick is hard, Daddy. I got to go take a big old piss <laughs> and do it with a deep voice. I could be okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. But the penis and vagina, especially vagina. Uh, Mom's got a vagina. Don't talk about your mom that way. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's my daughter-in-law. Don't speak about her that way. Yeah, I don't like, even want to think about her and your dad ever doing anything. She's well, like my daughter. The good thing is my kids are grown and I ain't got to go through that shit again. Oh, your grandkids will be around. Huh? Your grandkids will do it. Uh, that's a good thing about me. I'm a big enough dickhead. Uh, they stay gone. Well, not to my grandkids, but my kids. Ella. Good thing about an asshole. My kids don't even like to come visit. Nah, I don't believe that. But it is. They're 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 this sweet little young innocent thing, and you know, like the seven year old. I'm like, okay. So if you just do the math, he's got like five years, if I'm lucky, being nice to me. By the time he's twelve, thirteen, he'll be an asshole to me until uh, he moves out. I don't think he will be. You don't think so? No, not Reese. Reese has got too yeah, good a heart. But Jameson may tell you to go fuck off when he's nine, but not Reese. J I mean, Jameson may do it before Reese does it. Reese is such a good kid. He's a pleaser. He's a lot like you were. But either way, it's just like yeah, I, yeah, I realize girls, that my dude. time is, mm -hmm. I realize that my time being the cool dad is limited. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have them for that much longer. I, yeah. They're in my house for fucking ever, but I, yeah. I realize that I'm not going to be the cool dad for a whole lot longer. What makes you think well, you're a cool dad now? Oh, they love me, Jeff. They worship the <laughs> ground that I walk on. Uh, it'll be a lot easier for you because, like I say, you'll have a two-parent family. You know, like my boys, hell, they fucking uh, never had any Now, Jake, but Jake, he lived with his mom, so he had a lot of – we had a lot of in static, you know, through that. But, uh, but I don't, like I say, with – Having two parent family there, you you on two have. parent girls kids are now. Girls is totally different You're, because I guarantee you, when a girl is a daddy's girl until they turn thirteen, <laughs> and then you are the dumbest motherfucker there ever was until they turn seventeen. When because then when they get seventeen, you lose them when they turn thirteen. Mm -hmm. You get them back when they turn seventeen because they realize. That they're fixing to move off, move away, and they're gonna lose their daddy, and then they get clingy. That senior year, yeah, they love their their back to you, right? Yeah, because their daddy. Well, what girl. about now? What is it like? Oh, uh, same. So she's still clingy and good to you now. No, uh, no, she Hell, don't give two shits about you no nah, more. Nah, yeah. Well, I mean, Lindy's still there, so uh, yeah. I mean, we got good relationship now. Of course, they're smart asses like their moms <laughs> now, but. Your kid's lucky, though. They had a mom and dad at house. Yeah. That's a huge difference, and that is an advantage that your kids have because they got a mom and a dad, and they got a nucleus there. Yeah. And, that, and, and those kids have such an advantage in life. 
right now. If you've got a mom and a dad at your house, you've got to step well, up on other Well, like I say, the two oldest didn't no, have No, but the, the kids that well, do. Well, luckily, Haley, she finally wound up moving in with me when she was like 13. So, but yeah, so she, the yeah, kids it, that, it's huge. It, it's a difference maker for the kids. You look in our society, the kids that have a mom and a dad right now, have got such an advantage over the single parents. And that doesn't mean Chicago, that you can't Chicago, Illinois yep, that's right. is living yep. birth. That's And there's a lot of single parents that do a great job. I'm not knocking all of them, but the statistics show that kids raised in a single parent home have a lot of problems. Yep. What, no, no matter what it is. And Especially boys. Yes. Boys in a single need, family home, which is primarily the mom. Yeah. Is, it, is this Jeff's? <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's, that's one of our sponsors. That's sent us Logan, that. I love dicks. I mean ducks. I mean ducks. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, all right. But uh, he does though. He loves dicks. Right, ducks. That's kind of what. A, but we. Uh, but you, Chicago's deal. But the 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 boys especially when they the boy turns. Oh, they got to. They have, have that. to. Have, they need a man around. Yep. Whether don't. it's to discipline, to get onto them, to visit with them, to talk to them, to bullshit them. A, a boy needs to also learn how to handle the stress of getting screwed with, and and, and having some friction in his life. Yeah. You know, and well, you're picking on them. So if they need that, competition's good for them. Yeah, they need, like I say, they need to be, they need to be broke down because they get too cocky. Hey, you see these goddamn little seven year old kids talking to their mama like a fucking, you know, like the adults do. Mm -hmm. Bitch, shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, I mean, somebody little, slapped and knocked their teeth out. They quit doing that. Goddamn right, <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't ever even dreamed of it. And I, I come from a one parent home but my mama had that bluff in early <laughs> Hi -ya, motherfucker. yeah i didn't even dream of saying that shit but it's hard to see what's real on the internet but there was a video that i saw and dad comes in the daughter's room and he said hey i thought i told you to clean your room she said i thought i told you i was playing my video game he took up some shit that was on her fucking floor and he went Boop! Right into her tv and smashed it and he yeah, said I was saying when it. you get done playing your video game clean your fucking room yeah and, and those that shit has to happen a bunch. <laughs> That's what they need, though. Yeah, god dang right. They, they, they need to come that. up with an app, a parent app. Oh, you want to be an asshole? Push that button, that phone dies. You know? Just an automatic app. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, you geeky fuckers that don't listen to this, tell your geeky kid or something to come up with that app, a parent app. And you can just turn their phone off by pushing a button on your phone. You know, and I'm surprised they don't have much more. Could you that. imagine that shit, That's though? Like that Live 360, yeah. you know, yeah. that's the greatest fucking app yeah. ever. You know, because it gets on there and it, you know, my kids, even to their day, you know, I can see that they're going 95 miles an hour, which mm -hmm. has happened. And I was like, motherfucker, you better slow that guy. If I, if I look and it gives a report, you know, of every trip they make, it tells or it tells me where they're at, how many infractions, where they run this red light or da da da. Man, that was the greatest fucking. I'm glad they didn't have it when I was a kid, but <laughs> no shit. Fuck. Had pay phones. Oh, yeah. We would burn that motherfucker up now. <laughs> I, would, I wish I'd owned the pay phone at the uh, car wash on Kemp Street. Can you imagine oh how many quarters God. we put in that you son of a bitch back in the day? Right. Who owned the pay phones? The, uh, individuals. The telephone? A lot yeah, of individuals, Bell, you could buy Bell, them, too. Bell, really? <clears throat> you could, the, the phone companies had them, but you could, yeah. as an individual could buy a, self, a, a pay and phone. Put a pay phone in. Yep, pay them $100 a month or whatever it was, but you just going to collect a shitload of quarters. you old putt-putt go. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, put, put, I left the right side of my face out there one time. Guy scraped my face off on the pavement out there. I was drunk and I was beating his ass and I had him in a headlock and I was working him over and talking to people while I was working him over and either, I don't know if he got a punch on me or knocked me out or I just passed out from exhaust. But all I know is I woke up next morning and my whole fucking right side of my face was fucking ripped off. They said he took me by my ears while I was out and scraped my face on that goddamn asphalt at that car wash. Mm. Oh, goddamn. I ain't shit. My lips. I woke up the next morning. My lips were scabbed together. My eye was scabbed together. Mm. And I go, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gotta, you gotta go try to pick pussy up at fucking Stetson's night after that. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I still look with this little part over here. <laughs> God damn. Uh oh, is that, is that the worst you've ever gotten it? Oh uh, yeah. 
Not unless he, if he tells a story about <laughs> the ship too, it wouldn't be. I, I, he got me drunk, and I, I, I found him over at Century City. Oh, you uh, found out who he was? Oh yeah, yeah, California Dale. I don't know what his last name is. California but Dale. I know he's from California. His name is Dale, and I was looking for him and looking for him, looking for him, and uh, I was shooting pool. You remember that little pool hall in uh, Century City? The Blarney Stone. Is that what it was? There's a sports. Yeah, I think it was called the Blarney Stone. Yeah, I maybe. Mean, but anyway, I was shooting pool, and I looked up. And M. Walt, California Dale. I saw a motherfucker. My name is Sue. How do you do? <laughs> I did go beat his fucking ass. Let's see how you fare when I'm sober. Yeah. All right, before we get off of here, yeah. we're going to do a giveaway with Clay. It's going to be a two-day hunt, coyote hunt, pig hunt, whatever y'all did last year. Uh, we did we did coyotes, but I think it'd probably be because I'm killing a bunch of coyotes. Probably be fun. I'll do whatever they want to do, but uh, pigs is... I got lots and lots it's of pigs. pigs. So, anyways, you win a two-day hunt with him. Get to stay at the stabbing cabin. Is that where they stayed yep. at last year? And uh, you're going to do it. It's a giveaway we're doing. We're going to do it over the summer. It's going to be a scholarship fund for the Ron Stanfield Memorial Scholarship for my dad who passed away. And it's going to go to a, a local kid here in Knox County that's uh, either a first responder or a hospital kid or something. And you can buy the tickets for $25 a raffle ticket. Or you can buy six tickets for $100. You can buy them off PayPal at goose at west w e s t e x dot net and we're going to give that hunt away opening day of dove season we're going to do that on opening day of dove season the guy that won it last year was from canada yep. great guy randy Shooting and cole some bitches too. great 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 guys yeah anyway so uh holler at me at the office or send me an email goose at west dot net or paypal goose at west dot net and that's six tickets for a hundred dollars to give it away and it's for a scholarship fund uh and that's basically it. I really, do you think you think of anything else, Andy? Sound you you nailed it, Jeff. Well, good. I did something right this time. I didn't blow the damn introduction today either. And we were live. There's not, a good chance that was going to happen. It's yeah. just natural. No, it's not. I, Boy, a, I, I it up I, more. I, I, but I have that animal. I just bring out the best in people. You sure do, Clay. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. One thing I want to know. All uh, right. You're you're a wild guy. Rattlesnakes. I got to pee. Yeah. Do you fuck with them or no? Yeah. You do? I okay, am. well, that, then that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because we I was driving in, there was a dead snake on the side of the road. And I was like, I you saw know it. what? I want, yeah, in you the saw it too. Road, yeah. yeah. I wonder if Clay will dick with, with snakes and rattlesnakes and stuff. Yeah, I've caught rattlesnakes. Yeah. Well, I don't sense. do it nearly as much as I used to, but there for a while, yeah, we go. They don't bother you. No, they don't bother me. You know, that's what. My buddy Benton that up there in uh, Virginia, he comes down. As soon as he gets out of the truck, he's got his snakes. Hell, I run all over that country in fucking tennis shoes all night in the dark. <laughs> now, it has. Here, here oh, a month ago, I seen more snakes that one night than I had five rattlesnakes that one night. And that's fucking more than I've seen in the last five years. Really? Yeah. And I, so I dig. <laughs> and it just so happens that same night. I shot a coyote way out there in the mesquite and goddamn grass tall, and I've got fucking deal, and I've done fucking kill five <laughs> fucking rattlesnakes, big rattlesnakes, and I'm a little on edge, and I can't find this coyote, and I stepped on a goddamn stick, and when I stepped on that stick, it rolled up oh. and hit me in the leg. You I ain't shitting how dressed up fucking high. <laughs> yeah. So I, but, uh, but I need to get me some damn... Uh, I'm <laughs> deathly afraid of snakes I'll tell you, of any I, kind. I'll tell you a story about fucking with snakes. We're over there at a deal over there, a guy named, I won't even mention his name, but anyway, he, <laughs> nah, I don't give a shit. The hell is a, a guy named Lloyd Posky. No, Lloyd Posky was <laughs> fucking old, and old, uh, fucking with a rattlesnake over there. And, uh, Bill Tom Fleming, he was sitting there and he said, uh, and uh, they had a little old rattlesnake, and old Lloyd went fuck with that goddamn rattlesnake. And the goddamn he goes over there, and old uh, uh, said, said goddamn. Uh, and Bill Tom tells him, he said, Lloyd, you better quit fucking that goddamn rattlesnake. That some bitch gonna goddamn bite you. He's ah, fuck. Ain't a snake alive, goddamn killer Potsky. Boy, about that time, that fucking some bitch bit him on the fucking thumb, I think it was. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, he said, goddamn, old Bill Tom. He said, goddamn, Lloyd, we're gonna have to. Uh, 
fucking get you to the hospital. He goes, now you better check on the fucking snake. <laughs> hey, <laughs> snake alive, kill a fucking Potsky. <laughs> a little bit later, right, the fucking boys are starting right there. He went to the hospital. We had a, yeah. we had a game warden in Oklahoma telling us a story about he got a call one time on this mountain. And it, wasn't, it was a hill, rocky hill. Guy had been snake bit. And we were duck hunting in this field next to it, and he was, he was right there. So he's telling me about it, and he said, yeah. So I drive down there, and he said, this old, I guess, old meth monster from that town there had been <laughs> bitten. The ambulance was blowing up, and he's like, and his old hand, he got bit, and you could see the puncture wounds in his hand. He's like, damn, what, what, what were you doing? Oh, I was just walking down the ditch right there. He said, how, how the snake bite you? Well, yeah, I saw one. I tried to pick it up. He goes, now, you know that's posted. You're not supposed to be up there snake hunting. Oh, I wouldn't smoke snake hunting. He said, you're telling me the truth, right? God dang it. No, I, I, I knew I wasn't supposed to be up there. He said, my, bear, my bucket's up there, and I, I got, a snake, got a snake over there by it, and my, and my claw, my catchers are over there. He's like, okay. So he said, went up and got the stuff, got it with the hospital. It was a dry bite. He said, three days later, I get a phone call. Hey, they just called out to dispatch the ambulance to the same place from their day from a snake bite. So he goes up there. It's the same guy. He's like, I thought I told you not to be doing that. I know this time his old hands all swelled up and shit. It wasn't a dry bite. It's bit in the same fucking place almost. He's like, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I, 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 he said, I went to the hospital the next day and talked to the guy and, and asked me, he said, what are you doing? He said, well, what I do is I, I catch him in them snake handlers and then I reach down to grab him. He'd let go of it and try to grab him at the same time. And he'd let go of that snake before it got, to, before it was all he done. It turned him twice on the God, fucking head. Damn. <laughs> he said, I wrote him a ticket <laughs> for no trespassing, but got bit twice by a snake, but did both times the same way, reached to grab it and let go of the deal before grabbing it. Slow learner. <laughs> I think you knew that old boy in Arizona. You knew that was yeah, selling meth. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Clay. Clay Reed, it's been three hours. This is crazy. Doing a good Goes job. In a hurry. We'll have you on again soon. Uh, you enjoyed motorboat, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> don't, You've earned don't it. Don't sprain your tongue. Dang right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like uh, his, uh, somebody talking the other day. Uh, talking about getting old and her and her titties starting to sag and and she goes it's yeah it's kind of like that old man I said asked that old guy I said what the hell's that hair underneath your titties and the gal says my pussy well we defeated that before it ever got to that. <laughs> That was good. And with that, we're going to get out of here, ladies right. and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you for very listening much. to us. Have a great weekend. God bless you. See you next week. Go check out all of our great sponsors. Go check out Dive Bomb Industries. Check out Boss Shot Show. Alpha Outdoor Specialties, Pacific Call, Shin Gear Waiters, Dirty Duck Coffee, Lucky Duck, Looking Glass Duck Club Podcast, Gun Dog Outdoors, Steak Plains Meats, Stanford Hunting Outfitters, Bangtail Whiskey.